That one game I was I'm DM. Sure yep, oh, that one really? game you were. So, all right, let me go ahead and start our music here, and we will jump in. <laughs> so, awesome. So this is a little bit of a long recap because a lot happened last session. <laughs> so, um, I gotta turn my volume way down. That's super loud. Um. <laughs> The Honor Bound, after grabbing some much-needed supplies from Ubask, made haste out of the city with the Battalion of Hobgoblin Soldiers. Taking some time to get to know one another the night before the battle, Flint gave a rousing performance around the fire, Calvio provided entertainment with his card tricks, and thus they managed to gain a level of trust as well as put the soldiers a bit more at ease. After things calmed down, the Wyvern Riders came to ask Flint for some meat for their hunting trip for the day, and in return, they allowed Siga and Flint to approach the wyverns. The wyverns eventually allowed them to approach to feed them. And Siga spoke to them in Draconic. Hearing this language, there was an immediate reaction and recognition from the wyverns, though they could not converse back. <clears throat> The next morning, Flint attempted to bake a cake with his meager supplies to no avail. The party asked what he was doing, and he responded with, Who knew that the day one came into this world, one could leave it? The day of the battle had just so happened to land on Flint's name day. As the group gave them their bushy <laughs> birthday wishes, the battalion packed out of the campsite and proceeded to meet the orc war band. That was to be sandwiched between the two different armies. As the hobgoblins rushed into the fray, an Endorans engaged from the other side of the Fragon River. The battle raged on around the party, arrows flying and units clashing. The Honorbound made their way to the heart of the battle to strike at the commanders. The orc forces were utterly decimated though the Ragebringers held on to the last man, and one Batrider got away. The party struck at the command center with speed and efficiency. Fireballs flying, thundercraps ringing through the air, the command group broke from their tent to enter the fray and struck at the party. The two Tanaruks rushing into Kakira's face and bringing her to the brink of death, the Honorbound rallied to defeat the enemy. With Flint shattering the two commanders, Calvio cutting through one Tanaruk, and Marsica littered the last with arrows. We pick up with the two separate armies tensely waiting to see what the other will do, and our heroes in the center between them. So, moving over here. Um, let's go ahead and change our scene a little bit so we can see just the kingdom again. So. Um, as the last arrow is loosed from Marsica's bow, the clanging of metal from the nearby battle dies down as the last of the Tanaruks fall. You all wait a moment, catching your breath and tending to your wounds. When you notice figures approaching your location, the two armies wary of one another. A group of three armored horses approach from the north, utterly destroying the last ogre standing guard. Atop them are well-armored humans wearing the colors and heraldry of the Andoran army. As they get close to you, descending, um, as they get close to you, descending from the south from the sky is a familiar wyvern with two figures riding it. One of them jumps off and is also approaching your location. You recognize this figure as Euriska. As he nears the location, the two wyverns slam into the ground behind him causing the horses that have just approached you to rear in fear. They get their horses under control, and the two armies are currently regaining their formations. The Andorans positioning themselves to the north of you, while the Hobgoblins 
are po positioning themselves to the south. There is an obvious tension in the air as they approach you. Um, just to clarify, I would not have access to... You guys do not have slot. access to the new spell slots you've gotten just to level uh, up. We just leveled up earlier okay. so that we didn't have to do it in the middle of the session. Okay. I'm going to go ahead right. and click off another spell slot then. Yeah. Um, Clobar would position himself kind of standing... Uh, what's the word? Perpendicular, so that both armies could see him uh, about to speak. Okay. What is everybody else doing at this time? Is Kakira still looking hurt? Oh, yeah. Very. I'm gonna go cast Cure Wounds. After he does that, um, Clover would kind of motion for Flint to come over. So how much are you... So go ahead and roll the Cure Wounds. What do we got here? So, oh, nice. Kikira gets Thank twelve you. points of healing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kikira, Kikira feels a lot better. Is she still really hurt? No. Okay. Just kind of hurt. Do you want another? Because since it's the end of the battle, I can use another. We'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, where are we at here? As they approach. Oh. What's up? Oh, I had um, temp hit points that disappeared <laughs> between last <laughs> session and this session, but they'd still be there. Do you remember what they were from? Uh, it was false from False Life. Life. From False Life? So go ahead and yeah. add those back on then. That's fine. I'll just I'll say like 12. I don't remember yeah, what the no number stress. was. I think at what level did you cast it at? Second. Second level? So that... Yeah. Okay. I think it's a D4 plus 9. Cool. Yeah. D4 plus so then nine, it'd be so two. Like... Would it be two D four then? Anyways, I'll let you let you do your thing. Um, <laughs> so, as they approach, one of the figures on the armored horse um, dismounts and walks up. As Yuriska also walks up to the six of you, and Yuriska would say. Now that was quite a decisive battle. Um, and the human figure would say, Quite. Hopefully it shall um, not lead to more bloodshed. Uh, Clobar uh, looks at both of them. Uh, he gives the Andoran commander a handshake, and he does the traditional uh, arm grab. Um, with, with. Uh, so who are you who, who are you approaching first? Are they not both within like distance? Yeah, they're both within talking distance. But who are you approaching? Um, he would approach the Andoran first. Okay. Um, he's, he's kind of like, he's holding a, a, uh, like a lance and a shield with him. Um, and as you approach, there is just a slight bit of tension because, and he will say, are you, sorry, I was thinking of risk for a second. Are you one of these? adventurers that we were told about um Clobar nods he says yes um I am Clobar uh, son of Vorkath of the Honorbound and he reaches he he like sticks his hand out for a handshake and says we could not have done this uh, uh without your uh, without your aid and uh, I am deeply grateful um he uh very re reluctantly takes your hand um and is very quick to let go of the handshake 
And um, go ahead. And um, you hear um, one of the wyvern riders has since dismounted and is speaking to Euriska in his ear. Euriska will speak up and say, "Now." We haven't seen battle in nigh on ten years. We crave a fight still. Why should we hold back? Um, uh, Clobar um, says, uh, you will see battle, um, if I may speak. Yeah. So, uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and enter the skill challenge section of it. And the the armies have moved in close at this point as Clobar begins to talk. And um, so, I'm going to go one by one and you guys will tell me what your characters are doing. And how they are attempting to aid in these negotiations. All right. So what skill, Clobar, uh, before you start, what skill are you attempting to use? Clobar is going to attempt to use persuasion. Okay. So um, go ahead and say what you have to say. All right. Uh, Clobar, did um, Flint come over after uh, he asked him to come yeah okay uh clobar speaks to both armies and says um soldiers of andorra warriors of zal we stand here today at the precipice of a battle never before seen in the history of the realm humans and hobgoblins fighting alongside each other, dealing a decisive victory to an enemy uh, more foul than any of us could have imagined. Um, I have seen it. The orcs swept through the Southlands, leaving, killing even the innocent. Uh, a, uh, an act completely void of honor. Honor is a virtue that our peoples share. Um, and at this point, he he lifts Flint's hand into the air if, and says... Are you going to allow him see? to do that, Flint? Yeah, I'm yeah. like a little surprised at first, but I, I go for it. Okay. Uh, he says, see here, this is Flint Fireforge of Andorra. He dealt the, the finishing blow to uh, two of the orc commanders. I am proud to call him my brother in arms. Um, as a citizen of Zal, it brings me great pride to know that I have such a warrior by my side. Uh, he says, uh, warriors of Andorra and of Zal, this battle is one our children will tell tell of for years to come for this day we have made history and we have sent a message to those without honor that we, they will be wiped from the face of this of this earth uh, he says um, uh, uh, if you fight for honor then you are my then you are my brother um, and with that, he finishes his speech, and I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, uh, bardic inspiration onto oh that. Okay. That you didn't use from last session? Yeah, I didn't use it from last okay. session. So I'm going to add that, and if if I fail it, I'm going to add my racial, racial bonus. Sure. Um, DC is going to be a 15 on that. All right, so go ahead and roll persuasion. 
the bardic inspiration is plus five. Yeah, so that's a total of 21 with right. the bardic inspiration in my roll. So, count that as uh, 21. Okay, so that's one success mm -hmm. there. And in response to that, um, you see some of the uh, Andorans are um, going back and forth. They're speaking. The hobgoblins are speaking and murmuring to each other. And um, Yuriska would say that they have proven themselves in battle this day. But does that not mean why would that not whet the appetites of the hobgoblin people more? Is that a question for Clobar or is, or is someone it's, else going to respond it's, to that? It's mostly a... Um, it's not necessarily a question for Clobar. It's something that he's pondering out loud. Okay. So, um, but that that was a success on there. Uh, I'm going to go to the order on my screen. So, we will say, we'll go to Calvio next. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, I, I'm assuming I heard him say... The, why would that not whet the appetite, right? Yeah. So what? Um, and and um, if you guys know fourth edition, this is kind of a modified skill challenge, but it is still a skill challenge. So you can use whatever skills you want. And what? I guess uh, I'll use persuasion since okay. all my other skills aren't really useful currently. They they can be useful if you have a good reason for it, right? Like. <laughs> If, oh. if you know, for, for example, if you have a good enough score in history, you can bring your knowledge of history into it, right? And see if you're convincing through showing those facts. I don't think stealth or sleight of hand are going to help me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to go with persuasion. All right, sounds good. <laughs> so, I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to pick stealth and just poof into the distance and you'll never see me again yeah that's yeah, yeah. okay no no i'm gonna do persuasion okay um, and calvio uh would walk up to a hobgoblin whose name i forgot um Yuriska, Yuriska. There it is. um at who i'm assuming is the one that just said that the whole what the appetite thing yeah and definitely would say that if you want to fight just to fight, what makes you different from these orcs? If you don't fight for honor or for something good, what are you fighting for? Um, so, Yuriska would reply to you saying that we fight to bring strength to the Hobgoblin people. We have used the other races as a whetstone to sharpen our blade. But we do not strike at those who cannot defend themselves. They know we are coming. So you would attack another people just for your own benefit, for no other reason. It is what has allowed us to survive. The strong survive. The strong survive together. Pride beset the man. I think you're too worried about yourselves and not the fact that you could join forces and be something greater than you already are. You may have had your differences in the past, valid or not, it doesn't matter. We are here. We have done something together. We have done something strong together. And if you are not willing to see that, then 
I'm not really sure what the difference is between you and these orcs that are also trying to be strong and use other races as a whetstone for their own reasons that they say that they are fighting people. Go ahead and make me a persuasion check. Shit, okay. DC will be... Uh, we'll make that one 15 as well. Okay, that's not so bad. I don't... I just have to not suck at this roll. That's a crit. My first roll of the day. Nice! So it's 26 total. 26 total! Counts as yeah. two successes, because you're 10 over. You're over 10 over the DC. I just need to... I need to have, like, a camera on my... On my dice tray. It's all so good, man. I trust you. you can see it's this all good. Stuff. Um... So... I'll figure that out. He kind, he kind of nods, and then even at that, the the human will speak up at this point, and he will say, "Um, I think he does have a point. We'd much rather have you as an ally in this valley of ours." And Yuriska kind of just grunts ever so slightly um we'll go ahead and move to Sega now what is Sega doing um so yeah sorry were you gonna say something Aaron? yeah um you would notice at the rustling of the troops and things uh go ahead and make me a, a perception check really fast this doesn't count as or what's your okay. passive perception um 18 Oh, 18? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you would notice that the wyverns are definitely on edge looking around and um, are eyeing those horses. So, do with that with what you will. The if, if, so, um, it's, it's up to you whatever you want your character to do at this point. Okay, so Sega, you know, is very much a pacifist. He doesn't, he's here in this battle because of the group of friends that he's with, but he's not here in this battle for the sake of Andorra or the Hobgoblins. Um, he's very much an outsider in that sense. Um, so, Sega is definitely doing a lot of room reading in that sense. I was going to say that he would probably use insight for a kind of role. I just I haven't quite figured out how to spin that one. Okay. Sega is not a, a persuasion person. So something how um, insight might help. Um, maybe giving intel to somebody else that has not done things yet or um i'm i'm not sure but because i'm not sure either yeah um if you can think of something then uh i am trying to think of something um flint will be up next by the way I should have given you some warning, Courtney. Sorry. You're good. I was just like, I have no idea what this order is going to be. So I've been sitting here trying to like, listen and think. I like to keep everybody on their toes here. I, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so then... Mm, I don't know. I was going to say, could I use like insight to be able to but that I don't know that doesn't make sense <sighs> I was gonna say to be able to read the room and then be able to go from there but that doesn't <sighs> that doesn't help um, um maybe to call out how people are feeling that may that may inform how everybody else does their things moving forward Okay. That was kind of what I was gonna do. <laughs> if that yeah. makes you so, better. So, so, 
the order after this point, it's going to be Flint, Kakira, Marsika. So Marsika's going last. Okay. If that makes you feel any better, Courtney, because that's kind okay. of... Because we've got very similar... Right, where we just kind of like, not really in the fray, but we're in the fray. <laughs> yeah, um, we're, we're dexterity characters, so... Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so then would something like... Then could I do something like that? Yeah, um, just go, go ahead and describe me what your what Sega's going to do, and okay. um, I can confirm and or deny if that sh is going to be insight or not. Sort of deal. Okay. If if that helps. I guess. Um. Oh gosh. Okay. So. Then I guess Kasiga would have probably been kind of in the middle of the pack, uh, at least kind of of everybody kind of watching both sides, if not to the back of the group a little bit, to where he can just see everybody because he's just observing. Okay. Um, and would have definitely noticed the wyverns. Um, he probably... Um, would have said something along the lines of, uh, how he wouldn't want to see any more, any more bloodshed than is necessary, that we have this wonderful opportunity, um, for peace. And he's kind of watching everybody's reactions just to see how they're responding to everybody so, else talking. So you're trying to see, are you trying to see how everybody else is reacting to what has already been said? And then... Yeah, okay, yeah, that's probably pretty accurate. Okay. So <laughs> at that... probably wouldn't want to say too um, much yet. Yeah, go ahead and make me an insight check for that. Okay. Thanks for the... Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll try to help out as much as I can. So, and I would, like definitely give leeway for uh, newer players. And this is this is a thing that's kind of new to all of you guys. So. So that would have been an eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. So, what you would see with an eighteen insight check is that the um, the tension that was obvious is starting to abate a little bit. Um, okay. they don't seem to be at arms against each other at the moment. And the moment. there okay. is a sense of may what what could we accomplish together right now. Okay? Okay. Between what Clobar and then Calvio had said. Okay. Okay. Um, so, are you going to use that information and inform those the rest of the group going next? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, uh, um, I think it would say something smarter and more eloquent than I can put together in my head. Um, <laughs> uh. He would probably turn to, um, Flynn, um, <laughs> and he'd probably, uh, tell Flint to, uh, keep the serenade going of, huh. of, um, <laughs> working with, uh, getting people to work together and... He's probably saying this kind of under his breath, just so that, um, just like the group can hear it, but he knows that Clint is going to talk shortly after, so. Definitely. Um, yeah, to, he's kind of giving him, like, inspiration and, like, uh, this is, this is working. He can feel everybody relaxing a little bit, so don't worry as much. All right. Um, and then can Siga... Uh, would it be too weird if Sega walked towards the drag- uh, to not the dragons, the wyverns? You could definitely walk towards them at this point. Um, 
that would be outside of the skill challenge stuff. So whatever you do at this is like your yeah, what your character be, like, is doing. Besides the point, just trying to like go see how. I, I think Sega would just kind of like stay over there a little bit and just kind of keep an eye on them to make sure that nothing happens and that okay. they're they're not going to do anything weird. Yeah. Um, Try to eat anybody. <laughs> so, um. So Flint, Sega has just come up and told you that they seem to be responding well to the things that have been said so far. Um, what is Flint doing? Flint kind of walks up in between uh, the two captains there before us and um, puts both his hands out, one to each of them. Not like trying to like shake their hand or anything, but just kind of like putting his hands up. And he says, together we will grow. We will stand side by side. Together we will all survive. In time, from the same land, under the same sun, we will defend it for generations to come. And, all, and in time, all will see this world in all its glory. And he hands each a piece of a, a ration to each cat. He says, now, let us break bread, sit down, and talk. <laughs> nice. Um, what skill are you trying to use? 27 performance oh performance okay cool yeah with the with the poem definitely um they both like man you guys are rolling so good with this i was expecting things to go like at least a little south so far but damn nice um so 27 that is another Two successes. That one. Um, nice. So, they each tentatively take a bit of jerky from you. And Yuriska would say, I will dine at thy table. Flint yeah. literally just sits down in between both of them and like pulls out a napkin, lays it on the ground, and starts like preparing a nice ration to eat himself. <laughs> just in the middle of these two, these two guys, um, they they both like so like so stricken by your little poem that they are they don't even balk at you sitting down in between them in the middle of a negotiation. And they they are just like, this guy likes food. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they're sitting there eating, kind of just waiting to see what the rest of you have to say at this point. So Kikira, what are you doing? Do I have to say something? You don't have to say anything. You can, you can choose another skill as long as you can... Uh, argue to me why it would help in this situation. Um, can I do a medicine check and just like be moving around between the two armies and trying to heal anybody who was injured absolutely. during the fight? And okay. yeah, absolutely. All right, so go ahead and make me We're a medicine check. That. DC is going to be, uh, we'll say, uh, sixteen for this one. Okay. Uh, 23. I have a plus hell, 8 to medicine. Hell yeah. I feel left out. I didn't break 20 on mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> it's still a success. So, um, the, you, you almost make a scene of going between the different armies, I'm assuming, healing those, um, and that were injured. And you have definitely get the sense that um, you are strengthening the bond between the two of them, healing them. Um, so, now that leaves Marsica. What is Marsica doing at this point? Okay. Our, I'm just, Marsica's passive perception is 17. So would she by chance notice the animals acting strangely like the wyverns she, and the horses she she would she would definitely notice that the wyverns the um make uh yeah you passive perception is what now pa 
What's your passive in insight? Uh, 17 as well. Oh, damn. You have a plus 7 to insight? Uh-huh. Wow! Cool. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. You would definitely know. Um, being a ranger of sorts, and um, uh, you would know the look of a predator eyeing its prey. Um, sort of deal. Okay, so sh <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> okay. Um, could she use animal handling to calm said large animals on both sides? So if the horses, the horses are starting to get spooked because they're noticing the wyverns and try to, to somewhat calm the wyverns in a controlling manner so that they know that's not food at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to get at yeah. here? You can definitely do that. It would be difficult, but yes. So the DC for that one's going to be 19. Since these things are like four or five times your size. At least. Okay. But it is, it is possible. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go for it. Uh, okay. 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 23. <laughs> wow. Nice. So, with no failures and eight successes, because one of you guys beat the, uh, uh, the DC by over 10. There right, is so. definitely a sense of camaraderie growing between the two armies. Th who, those that were holding their swords, Kakira managed to wade through, heal them, and calm them down in the process while also listening to you all speaking. Um... Yuriska will speak up and say now I may be speaking out of turn of sorts here I hope that our leaders will see what we can accomplish I will tell our council what we have seen here today that those citizens of ours gesturing towards Clobar hold you and your kind in high regard. And uh, who has a passive perception above uh, 17? Siga? Siga's the only one? Siga does. Okay. Siga oh, yeah. would hear as he begins to walk back to his men, and he says under his breath, Now I wonder what Andoran soldiers could do with our training. Um, and they sort of, and um, the human captain comes up to you at this point, and he says, well, I'm, uh, I'm glad I didn't open up my trap. I probably would have botched that whole thing. Um, who, who are you exactly? We were told to look out for an adventuring group of sorts that is, that would be here. Do I know this, Captain? Um, make me a history check. Eight. Eight? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, the face is a little familiar, but you don't remember his name. It's her deal. Um, and speaking of which, he will kind of lay his arms down, offer his hand to Clobar properly, and say, I'm sorry for my hesitation. Um, Clobar shakes his hand heartily and says, It is okay. I understand um, there is there is a history between our peoples. However, 
Um, these are trying times, and the the need for allies is greater than ever before. You are right. It's just hard to let go of the faces that were lost in that war. And he will turn to the rest of you and, as well and say, um, my name is uh, Josiah Tevius. Um, we appreciate what you've done here. I was told that if it was successful, the regent would have news for you. Um, have you heard about what has been, what has happened at the capital in your absence? No. What, what's happened? We got a, um, a messenger hawk yesterday on the, on the road out here. Someone apparently had tried to take the regent's life. They were unsuccessful, but someone had infiltrated the palace and then managed to get out. Huh. Any ideas of who or why? No ideas yet. Merely, they must have been highly trained to get in and out of there without being seen. if we end up back there in the next few days we'll probably end up seeing the regent and have a chat with him about it then he mentioned that he wanted to speak with you if this was successful as well have some sort of we should head there reward. so <clears throat> it is in the um, middle of the day so what is everybody doing at this point. Uh, after... Can I ask if... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sure. Uh, after, go ahead. After Kakir had finished walking around healing all the armies and seeing that everything was kind of wrapping up, she'd say, uh, we should check on the folks of Horadine's Hamlet. This. Calvia was going to ask the captain um, what happened to the people of Horadine's Hamlet. Um... We left uh, about 20 soldiers there to guard them, just in case any orcs had slipped past us. Haven't heard anything since. They, they were doing fine when last we saw them. Holed up in that extremely creepy dungeon underneath Fort Zeris. But... Um, Clobar uh, would ask, um, did you happen to see the door down there? I did not set foot in there myself. Um, Clobor said, um, we uh, managed to intercept some intel uh, when we com captioned, captured one of their commanders. Uh, apparently, whatever is in that dungeon is necessary, or behind that door is necessary uh, for the orcs to uh, achieve their goals. Uh, however, even with all of my arcane might, I was not able to open that door. That is very concerning. And he'll turn to the... Is Kakira have her hood down or not? Like, would she have her hood down in the fight? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. And he'd... He definitely look at you and um, and say, "Why, why were you laughing, birded one?" Um, his magical might <laughs> was quite entertaining <laughs> against that door. Interesting. Um, well. I have men to attend to. Do you have any other questions for me? Nope. No. No. Well, 
Well, like, everyone's moving around. Flint's, like, stuck out his legs and arms a little bit, protecting his food that he's set up. He's, like, making sure no one's gonna be stepping on it. <laughs> the, uh, the, <laughs> the captain has, like, stepped over you a couple of times as he's, like, trying to go around and, like, talk to people and stuff. But. Um. So. Moving okay. forward. Oh, I was just gonna say aside real quick, just because you asked Kakira if her hood would be up. I just realized I ha I was a giant hyena before we started all of this. <laughs> I'm assuming you so, would have like dropped the hyena form. Oh, oh, most definitely, but I was just thinking that they probably would have seen me like transform back, and Sega probably wouldn't have been thinking about putting his hood up at all. Okay. Um, so they would see you as well. Mm-hmm. I just realized that, and I was like, okay. oh, so I don't know if that has any implications <laughs> yeah. there, but, um... So, he would, he would have turned, he would have definitely been eyeing you and Kakira quite a bit throughout that whole interaction. Um, the hop goggles. Yeah, the hop goblins, not so much, because <laughs> they have, uh, interacted with you, but the humans are definitely like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, it was just an amusing realization of like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what are you guys doing? They are the hobgoblins are forming up, and you see Yuriska off speaking with the two wyvern riders, and um, Josiah has gone to speak with his men. Um, Clover would go speak to Yuriska. Okay. So, heading over to Yuriska, he um, salutes the uh, wyvern riders and turns towards you and says, That uh, is interesting. I was half um, expecting that to turn into another fight. Uh. Clovar kind of chuckles and says, I f I believe that we will see battle sooner rather than later, just not with the humans. Yes. They've um, proven a worthy adversary in the past, though. Do you think our people would be willing to let go of such a potent adversary. Um, Kobar says, um... You know our culture. Kobar says, um, when I spoke to the council, they were not they were not deaf to it. I believe that it may yet be possible. He says, um, whoever is commanding these works is more intelligent than the ones we faced on the battlefield today. The intel we uh, we intercepted that we delivered to the council was quite quite concerning. They will Aye. they will rally their uh, their forces for a second attempt, and I believe next time they may have more allies. I'm afraid this may have been a diversion. That was too um, easy. You believe that they would attack you, Basque? I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we get home. If they were he to nods. attack you, Basque, they would have been met with a uh, great surprise. <laughs> Clover chuckles. He says, um... I hope to see you on the battlefield again soon. It was an honor to fight with you. You too. And Did Calvio talked to Yuriska too before. Oh, of course, uh, he of left. course. So you're you're walking up at the tail end of this conversation. Sure. Yeah, I would have given them their space. Okay. And uh, noticing um, your approach, Calvio would say, "I hope I." I didn't offend you with my my statement. I just uh, 
I thought now would be a time for thought-provoking gestures. <laughs> no offense taken. But I do have an idea that you might approve of. He's listening. I, I understand that sharpening one's sword for the betterment of their people is a is a good thing. Um, I myself can appreciate the handiwork of the hobgoblins, and I would like take the sword that I got out and like spin it around a bit. And then, like, end with, like, putting it in the dirt right in front of me <laughs> and putting both my hands on it. So, <laughs> my thought is, instead of clashing blades for war, why not try and set up a friendly competition? Once a year, twice a year, every two years, whatever you guys send, start... Maybe send some warriors, and you can trade cities. So one time Andorra comes to Ubask, the next time Ubask comes to Andorra, and you have a friendly competition with each other. And you can make a trophy or some other kind of benefit that you can stroke your pride a little bit, but keep your alliance. <laughs> I like that idea. I had a feeling that you would. The problem as I see is I don't know if the Andorans would appreciate getting their asses handed to them every year. <laughs> well, then I guess we'll just have to step up to the challenge. <laughs> and ah. he, Calvia would pick up the sword and kind of put it on his shoulder and say, not all of us are pushovers. He definitely smirks and is laughing as he's walking back to the rest of his um, troop at that point. Calvio just kind of waves and walks away. Aaron loves that idea. <laughs> I had a feeling you would. <laughs> um, so, what's everybody else doing at this point? Marsica's still petting horsies or something. <laughs> um, All right. Clobar is assuming this is part of his level up. He's tinkering with a spell he's trying to perfect. All right. Cool. Um, Flint, what are you doing? I have 18 rations left. I'm going to give out nine to each side. Nice. Fabio would go up to Flint while he's like giving that away. He, he was like, get out that instrument of yours. Play something. I'll give these out. Flint just nods his like, good idea and just hands you a sack full of rations. <laughs> it's a lot heavier than you thought it would be, by the way. <laughs> a lot heavy or yeah. kind of heavy? Like, like a, li it's it's like a heavy. little bit heavier than you thought it would be. Okay. Yeah. Like If it's a lot heavy, yeah. then I don't know about that. And yeah. then that's a 26 for performance. To play nice. Jesus. So nice. you're just sitting there playing music. Um, a few soldiers. Cabrio is definitely dancing while he's passing out these things. <laughs> oh my god. Awesome. A few soldiers from each side. They're both. They're all coming over and starting to listen. Um, and furthering the bond that has been made at least between these two groups. Um, Siga, what are you doing? So, Siga, um, <laughs> probably would have walked up to Marsica and been like, so you noticed it too? <laughs> and then would have looked like at the wyverns and then at the poor horses. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just nod and she's like happily cutting the horses. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, Sega would have chuckled, and he probably would have walked. Um, uh, actually, he probably would have like kind of stayed on the outside of like Flint's little circle and just kind of like stood there 
and crossed his arms and smiled at like his new friends and he loves them like creating merriment so he's just kind of watching everybody <laughs> all right nice <laughs> kakira uh after kakira had healed everybody she probably would have sat down somewhere and tended to her own wounds all right are you gonna heal uh, like actually cast healing spells on you uh depends on how long i'm sitting there and how long everything else okay. takes you'd have more than enough time for a, lo a short rest if you guys want to do that um but yeah um, i think i'm gonna have to do yeah. song of rest while i'm doing this yeah that definitely would count for song of rest what does that well, do uh he uh michael you can go ahead and put that in the chat um uh, marsica what would you be doing oh uh, I don't know. Just hanging out with the horses still? Yeah, and Sega currently. All right. So, things start to die down. The armies form back up. You watch as uh, Yuriska, and, 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 even with the negotiations going so well, Josiah and Yuriska approach each other, have a short conversation, and you watch as they kind of, like, Josiah puts his hand out, and Yuriska brings him in for that the elbow um, shake. And they will go off towards their own... Um, armies and go off on their way so Ooh. which are you following either army are you chilling here for the rest of the day because holy crap um or where are you guys go going what are you doing at this point i think Clover Check out. Would... go ahead nope you're good would want to head to the capital to make sure that the regent was okay okay uh, Calvio? Can I check out the bodies of the, like, orc leaders before we leave? Definitely. Oh, see if there's yeah. any information or anything on them. Definitely. Go ahead and make an investigation Loot. check. Loot the bodies. Oh. Don't fuck me, dice. I'm, I didn't touch it. Please look at that and tell him what I rolled. I didn't <laughs> touch it. You fucking crit again. I didn't touch it. Yes, I did. I didn't touch it. I'm not touched it. The different knife. Yeah, it's a twenty. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I need to get me a dice tower. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, you see uh, a few things. It's technically a twenty-seven total, if that matters. Yeah, it does. Um, so, going through a few things, you see on the body, you see some really r relatively nice um, chainmail armor on the. Yoink. Um, the main commander guy, a spear, a shield, and, um, you would see a, another small, um, potion of sorts with red liquid in it, and you gather that he was heading to go take, he was trying to get to a safe place to take a healing potion before he was killed. At the end of the last fight. Blop, blop. Um, nice. But he didn't get a chance to take the healing potion. So it's a, nor it's a normal potion of healing. Um, potion of healing. And... The weapons or armor or shields seem to have like anything magical. Uh, you can cast Detect nice. Magic if you'd like. Man, if only I knew that. Uh, if you want, I could sit here for like 10 minutes and a cast identify you guys i mean <laughs> you have time if you want to um, like however much time y'all are going to be there for can i like do i see runes or anything on any of it make me an arcana check yeah, okay i'm good at that one too <clears throat> okay that one's not as good uh 13 uh from what you can tell there's no runes on anything okay um then I guess I'll just uh try to yoink everything as best I can since it's nice looking. All right. So um, you can go ahead and add a spear 
chain mail the healing potion to uh, your inventory. And then, um, what was I going to say? Um, with the 27, yeah. you would see tucked in his boot a small roll of parchment. Ooh, what's on the parchment? There's a parchment in my boot. <laughs> also, if somebody could totally take this chain mail. Just trying to be legit about the weight that I'm carrying. <laughs> um, would be great. Marsica so could probably hold on to it for you. All right, Marcia's gonna give Marcia the, the chain mail. All right. Huh? Yeah, yeah, please, for sure. Um, uh huh. On this parchment, looking on it, it is. Um, go ahead and. Uh, what languages do you know? Not orc. <laughs> yeah, but what languages do you know? Celestial, common. Elvish, Old Tongue, and Thieves Camp. Okay. Yeah. So. You cannot so it's read. Just a whole bunch of gibberish. Yeah, it's kind of gibberish to you. Oh, Does there. it look like the previous orc handwriting okay. that we've uh, seen? You can go ahead and make me an intelligence check. Uh, hi, I'm good at that. Just a straight one. Yep. Oh. Not good at that right now. 14. 14? Um. It's almost on the tip of your tongue. Like, you, you've, you've seen this script before, but you don't know where. Since Marsica's over there, since she took the chain mail, can she, like, peek over his yeah. shoulder? Yeah, because she's right there. I, w I would also be like, hey, Clobar. Whatever. Because um, he can at least cast a tech language. Or uh, uh, whatever. Comprehend language, language is the word. Yeah. Uh, Marsica... Actually, this is not orcish. Clubber would go ahead and start casting Comprehend Languages as a ritual. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. It's not Infernal, is it? It is Infernal. She goes, oh, she reads oh. it. She reads Clubber it. can speak that. So both of you guys can read it. So Marsica has the paper. So um, Marsica first. You would see on there, it says... <clears throat> Take that fort, report back to the war chief, and then send a hawk to me when it is done. It is signed, Helmina. Bitch. Ooh. I never heard my name before. Uh, she would say it out loud with, um... Calvio right there. Is Clobar over there now, too? Yep. Yep. So, does this count as a thing? Like, I don't remember that. So... Um, Calvio. I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Yep, okay. I had a feeling. <laughs> oh, that... Uh, 21. 21? At the Seven mention people. of Helmina's name... There is a almost the swirling in your head for a moment. Oh, that's the you you have you put your hands to your knees bent over, but you regain your composure. But like I was like behind Marsica, like shoving this chain mail in her pack basically. Yeah. And then Marsica would like feel me like kind of like grab at the pack for balance and like go down to a knee for a second um I guess that feeling that she would turn around and, and look at him are you alright so Calvio would be breathing a little heavy and be like yeah I I must just be tired would she know what like happened say would... that again would she know that it looks like a panic attack um make me an insight check and what was Clobar what were you gonna say um, I was going to ask if Clover saw that, and yeah, did you anywhere near us? Probably. Yeah, yeah, Clobar definitely noticed that. Um, uh, Marsica, what did you? What was it? Twenty-seven. <laughs> that was definitely he. Basically, that that yeah, panic attack. <laughs> okay. 
Is Kakira nearby? Basically. Um, does does Marsika? Uh, okay, can can I make a medicine check to see if I would know how to handle a panic attack? She could say something. <laughs> well, like yeah, if, there there is somebody who could do something. Well, if she fails, then I'll call for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You could make me a medicine check and see if it okay. helps. Oh wow, another one! I swear, I swear. On insight. Twenty-four. Nice. What was Did that? she roll a twenty-seven on insight? On insight, yeah. yeah. So what uh, else? Then you would have a. You would know that Calvio has no idea what the fuck is happening. Then. Yeah. Okay, but like. But it, but it is a panic attack, right? It seems there there might be a little more to it, but like a super intense okay. panic attack that he just staved off. Okay. Um, okay. And so, yeah, the medicine check, definitely you get him to calm his breathing and get him to basically stabilize, but he's still how, feeling however you uh, he feels about that. So. Um, okay. And then I'd be like, all right, let's, oh, okay. Yeah. Let, let's get you to Marsica. I mean, not Marsica. Kakira. I'm Marsica. Let's get you to Kakira. You? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. So, like, I'd help him up and help him get over to Kakira and make sure he doesn't, like, have to take a knee because he's panicking or whatever is happening right now. So. Okay. He would be calmed down by the time he got to me. He would be calmed yeah, down I'm not by like, the time. Yeah. I, I would say that I'm probably not freaking freaking out. I'm not tweaking. <laughs> um, okay. I'm definitely confused and have no idea what the fuck is going on and why that happened. Um, like when I said I'm probably just tired, I genuinely meant that I probably was just tired. That's not what's going on, but probably. So, uh, where's Clobar at the moment, and what is Clobar doing? Clobar would have rushed up to him and uh, said, um, would Clobar have put two and two together that her reading that name was what triggered? Make me an intelligence check. I'm good at that. Just straight intelligence? Yep. Oh... What is oh, it? I'm not good at that right now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Damn. Clobar is currently riding that high from the battle and the negotiations working. They could have not gone better. Um, he is pretty psyched about that. Yeah. Though. Calvio, you've definitely noticed that there is something wrong with Calvio, but you weren't um, you weren't necessarily paying attention at the moment with mm. uh, the mention of Helmina's name. So, okay, yeah. So, uh, we have Kakira, Marsika, Calvio, and Clobar off um, speaking. What is Siga doing at the moment? I'd ask Clint what he's doing too, but he's Michael's not currently at his chair. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. noticing all the commotion. Um, probably would have like come over just to make sure everything was doing, uh, make sure that everyone was doing okay. Mm -hmm. um, been confused by the weird squiggles that he saw on the paper that he could not read. And instantly curious about a new language. <laughs> uh, then Marsika would see him looking confused and be like, oh yeah, here, let me read this to you. <laughs> so, um, you all gather and uh, you can speak more about this if you would like to. Is there anything anybody else would like to do to address what has just happened with Calvio? I mean, I think Akira would just give him some water and set him down. Yeah. Just make sure he's doing all right. Make sure he's okay. But don't want to be overbearing, so Sigo's trying to, like, make sure everything's okay, but not get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Did I, I see any, like, visions or anything? Or was it just, like, a foggy head down um, to me? Um... 
you would have seen just the briefest flash of a creature standing on your chest with blue skin and horns that go back ever so slightly. Oh. I to Courtney totally forgot. Sega wouldn't know who the hell Helmina is. <laughs> no. Um, so, Sega probably looking at all of this. Marska, did you end up saying um, Helmina's name when I was... No, no, no. Uh, no, no. Sega. When Sega was like looking over her at the all the like weird scribbles. Did yeah. Did you happen to say that name? I would have, yeah, because even if I mean, even with Calvio right there, he was behind me, so yeah. I would have noticed that was what set him off. So I would have okay. said it. I don't know if I would be directly in the vicinity for him to hear it again. I mean, <laughs> ma breath. you can make me an intelligence check if you want to. Okay. Did I miss anything? Um, a little uh, bit. I don't know when you drama. left. Yeah, a little bit of well, drama. Well, the intelligence check is 18. Right when uh, 18? Calvio had his Marsica read the letter that was signed Helmina. Calvio, Calvio tweaked out. That's pretty much where we're at. Yeah. With then... the, with an 18, Marsica would you would have just realized at that moment before you were about to say it. But then you were like, whoa, wait a minute. There was some <laughs> shit. There was some stuff that happened with Helmina and Calvio. Um, that probably triggered it. Uh, Mar with also an 18, uh, Marsica would know, um, what, remember what Zerf had done to help Calvio be put back together, basically. Right. Okay. So. Um, okay. Is that important? Should I tell Calvio again? Okay, I'm trying to remember. That's okay, um, that's okay. Yes, you guys have pretty much already explained to me what happened, so. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember any of it, but I know. But Siga was only there for, like, the putting me back together portion. And, right. and Clobar was asked to come... Um, to basically help Calvio if anything like that had happened, sort of deal. Right! Okay, okay. So then, <laughs> I guess at her having that realization, um, she would kind of go explain what she thinks it was to Clobar and what set him off. And then she would then, like, hushedly go explain to Sega what just happened. <laughs> I noticed that they're like going around talking about me. Make, me an, in me. make like, me an I insight check with disadvantage. Oh god damn it. Okay. I was gonna say Kakira would have probably been like trying to keep his attention. <laughs> hey look I over here buddy. Hang on. Look look how, over how here. Are you buddy. Keeping my attention? This is important. Yeah, yeah what's Kakira uh, doing right with, now? Like food and water and like talking to you and just making sure like you're still like conscious and aware of what's going on. How many, are you talking to me about anything in particular? And, Ice cream. Uh, just like, how are you feeling? And <laughs> being stuff doctor, like that. essentially. Yeah, being doctor. Playing doctor. She's playing a nurse. So what, <laughs> what would um, Flint do? What would Flint be doing at this point? Flint's like quickly taking some ingredients and like making a little soup for him real fast. It'd be a cold <laughs> soup, but it, you know, it's still soup. So like making sure it's good. Can right. can I roll to see if Calvio knows that Kakira is trying to distract him or not? And insight then check make with the insight check. That's that's part of the insight check. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't know if Cal uh, Calvio would. Okay, we'll just do this. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's a crit. Um. And that's a one. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna go with uh, four. Calvio is like just taking the food and things that are being handed to him at this point. That he, or I, I should say, you are not, you do not <clears throat> gather that they are talking about this situation behind your back at the moment. Okay. So what does uh, Marzika say going up to uh, Clobar? 
Um, she would. Okay. Okay, so she would look at Clobar and, like, kind of seriously say, "This is a Helmina-related incident, and I believe you uh, who are is Helmina? working over him for that type of stuff, correct?" Um, Clobar doesn't know who Helmina is. Uh, you would just know that a high, uh, he would just know that a oh, night hag. The fiend, okay, they, yeah, the Like, hag. a fiend shattered him, basically. Right, That's right, all. sorry, so, okay. Um, so she then, okay, no, if, so if you just said, okay, so she would say that, uh, sorry, Helmina is, is the, the fiend who caused the big ol' issue that Calbio had when we had to fix him. Um... Clobar would look concerned and would say, Does it not worry you how many of these threads seem to be converging? Well, what do you mean? He says, um, Fort Zaris, the Orc Hordes, the Tanarooks, Magister Shren, um, the chained one. Uh, uh, Helmina. No, Helmina. He says, these things right now. <laughs> are creating a tr very troubling pattern. And um, I'm beginning to worry that there is, there is something quite foul going on behind the scenes. So you believe they're all working together? Um, Potentially? He says... Being um, led by the same thing? I'm not sure that I believe in the chained one. I've never been much of a, uh, a religious zealot. Uh, however, it is clear from what we have learned that these these works are not... are, are being... Um, are being fed information that will uh, that has uh, prompted them to take action and not necessarily action within their own best interest. Um, we may have won this battle today, but um, we certainly uh, have not won the war. Not yet. Right. No, I agree. I agree. Um, just to bring us back to Calvio, though, sorry to... I do think this is a big issue, but is there anything we need to do about Calvio at this moment? Um, uh, That's such a Marsica thing to, to ins... say. <laughs> Clobar is um... like pulling these threads together, and then Marsica's like, "Yeah, but, <laughs> oh, but, but Calvio." <laughs> um, what? Uh. Never mind. Uh, so I would go check on on Calvio. Okay. So Did you I hear any of that talk? Um, what's your passive perception? Fifteen. Not much, since since you are currently helping, like you're you're currently busy at the moment. You you've basically <laughs> gathered that they're talking, and you've heard the chained one's name a couple of times, Calvio's name. So, okay. not much. Um, so, Clobar is approaching Calvio at this point. Uh, from what you can see, mm -hmm. Kakira is current. Flint has just handed Calvio some really cold soup. Kakira is making sure that Flint is drinking some water. Um, Calvio is drinking water? Calvio. Is, is, is Calvio <laughs> drinking water? Probably. I mean, I like water. <laughs> sure. All right. <laughs> Is there anything um, in the water that I need to worry about? Why is the water a big deal? <laughs> no, I just... I... It's drunk! <laughs> I cannot hear you, Courtney, if you're talking to us. You're good. I just kept pausing. I was going to say, it's not the water. It's just the fact that Aaron accidentally said Flint was drinking the water instead of Calvio, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all just chatting, and I'm drinking water and stuff yeah. in my face, I suppose. His, his face is a little white. 
Calvia would notice. It's a, a little pale. Clobar? Clobar, yes. God, everybody's names. Clobar <laughs> would notice Calvio's face is a little pale. Um, Clobar would... Is there any uh, way he can kind of magically see if there's something going on with Calvio or... Um, you go ahead and make me an Arcana check to see All if there's right. anything. 24. 24. Um, so you know that there are certain spells. Um, let me just look at the wizard spell list here real fast to see... What is happening right now? You guys are... <laughs> Nothing at all. Everything's don't, fine. Don't worry about what it. What are you doing? <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta exit out of my Facebook. <laughs> I just hear like... But ding, but ding, but ding. <laughs> Kakira wants the RMA Calvio. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um... Return merchandise authorization. Oh my gosh. It's, my stuff's broke and I need a new one. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> This is not target customer service. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, I was thinking like um, the McDonald's <laughs> ice cream ice cream machine broke. Calvio broke. <laughs> Have a nice day. I'm not always no. broken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only sometimes. Well, I mean, you've been pretty broken a lot of the campaign. <laughs> okay, look. I don't appreciate this discrimination, guys. I mean, we're taking care of you. Yeah, we're That's fine. fair. You're okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so. And then I'll make Clover continue unwinding everything once we know you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what great. was what was your Arcana check? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Oh, okay. So. Where was it at? They're totally meta, because Calvia doesn't know any of this. Who's got the letter that says the other place the orcs wanted to go to? I think we gave that to the council. God damn it. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. You can, Does anybody remember the other know. place that the orcs wanted to go to? I mean, technically, Sika would, but Courtney doesn't. <laughs> Why would Sika? Because, uh... Um... I mean, didn't we read the letter out loud? Sika probably would have stored that in his memory. He Heaven, I think Marsica would know because she actually knows where that location was. Is Poffrey Tower? Possible. Yeah. Yeah. And Clover has oh, the Sage right. background, so he never forgets down. anything ever. No, Sage background Keen doesn't mind. do that. That's Keen Mind. That's the feat. <laughs> So totally meta. Uh, Calvia doesn't know any shit about this because he didn't hear that conversation. But cough, cough, distraction, distraction, <laughs> cough, cough. Um, they wanted to go somewhere else. Cough, cough. We did. So after everybody's okay. Um, uh, basically, with the Arcana check, there's not a whole lot you can do with magic. You can try to detect magic. Or, um, uh, what's it? I just wondered if there was any, like, if part of his affliction was, like, leftover magic, or if it just seemed like, um, it was just an emotional, uh, reaction. Oh, yeah, so, with that sort of deal, you would be able to, if it was leftover magic, you would be able to see that with Detect Magic, most definitely. Uh Plot twist, we never Do actually I have detect my... I'm not even sure I have it. <laughs> Identify. I'm a terrible wizard. <laughs> um, actually a hairy wizard. Oh god. The grizzly gardener. Mask give me clover a sock! <laughs> no. Clover's free! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Why no, do I don't do have this? detect magic either. Yeah, I don't have. I don't Terrible. have. Terrible. That was yeah, that was a uh, uh, Excelsior thing. 
New character. Do I even have that in my spell book? Hang on a second. We're both terrible wizards. Where's my I'm spell not a book? wizard. You're a Although wizard. Not a very... nope. Does Flint have detect magic? Nope. Nope. Okay. I just kind of assumed somebody else would take that. Great. All right. Does, does I feel Marsica... like that's a. It's <laughs> pretty. Do you get that in your spell, druid spells? No. I mean, no. Have we Marsica done that just... before? Calvio did it before he got before he got in half. Yeah. And then he lost it because that's one of the spells that he lost. Oh. I... Question. Answer. Unrelated. Um, first of all, do pianos exist in your world? And second of all, can Flint play one? Uh, yes. I don't know. <laughs> Thank I have you. not encountered a piano yet. So, okay. no. You, you'd all get right. the sense that, that like pianos are probably a super bougie thing to have in this world. <laughs> Flint has yeah. the title to play at any high class places yet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what are you all doing? Hoarding's what Hamlet. Hoarding <laughs> Hamlet. Is there well, anything? Hoarding's Hamlet on the way in Andorra, so we can always definitely check out all that shit on the way. All right. Could we get to Horadines before nightfall? You could. It would it would be pushing it, but you could get to Horadines before nightfall. So we'll just crash in Horadines tonight. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um all right, unless there's anything guys else you would like to do here speaking to each other. Um you all make your way through the forest. Um you get the sense that the sound of the battle scared off anything that might have troubled you in this area. So your travel to Horridine's Hamlet is a quiet one. Nice. You eventually yeah. pass the soldiers since you guys are able to move faster than them um, since they're a large force moving. Um, and you get to Horridine's Hamlet uh, just after the sun has been setting or has set. From what you can the see, still, oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, the villagers are still currently underneath the fort. You see a set of, I think I said, twenty guards, uh, twenty soldiers are currently patrolling the perimeter of Horadine's hamlet. They see you approaching. They say, "Hail! Who's who goes there?" Uh, Clobor would stick his hand up and say, "The honor bound." Um. You know those, those adventurers? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, well, c come on through, come on through then. Um, so you guys make your way, and uh, are you going to head down to the fort and basically say, hey, it's safe? Yeah. Yep. We, we have to take the rock off, or was that already done? That was already done. Unless okay. you guys put the rock back on there for some reason after they all went no. in. No. Track Definitely them. not. Yeah. Don't you remember that whole bullshit thing about Clobar doing it basically by himself somehow? With the, uh, <laughs> the, I forget what happened with the huge strength chick. It was uh, me and Clobar, and Clobar basically crit. <laughs> and Calvio didn't roll that well. Some bullshit. I don't remember. That was hilarious. Um, so yeah, um, we would we would go down and tell them it's it's good to come out, and I'd like to go check out this stupid fucking door wall bullshit thing again. All right. So I think Akira will stick with Calvio. Go with okay. Him. So all of the uh, we'll go ahead and change our scene here since we are in Horadine's Hamlet now. Horadine's Hamlet. Hey, look, there's our glyphs of warding. Yep, the glyphs of warding. <laughs> that are um, still there. <laughs> that, yep, that are still there. Um, I gotta make some checks. I just remembered that. Oh, shit. We did set those glyphs of warding to uh, orcs set up. We did. Oh, was it only we orcs? Did. Okay, thank it was you. only orcs. Yes. Correct. So thank thank you for that reminder because I was about to do some rolls to see if the soldiers had tripped them up. Um, so they uh, they are still there. No orcs had made it apparently. Yep, awkward turtle exactly. Um, 
So as well, we'll... you guys open it up, Horadine is like the first one to come out with his cane. Like he, he hears the thing out coming and his, his cane is, um, you hear the clank of it coming up the stairs. He says, oh, that's a, that's about time. I can get out of here. I mean, would just step to the side and be like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose. And he just starts. Does it smell terrible? It's not. Yeah, it smells is there like bad. A... Yeah, there's Cal- like. Yeah, Kanye's just like. Yeah, you, please, you, dear it, God. It smells like they um they've been in there for I think what four or five days now, and there's oh, like. God. Uh, if uh, just off the top of my head, there's like twenty or thirty people that are like sleeping in different places, oh. throughout the dungeon, and. Instead of coming outside to use the bathroom, you assume that they probably found a corner to poop in. And it smells, it smells real bad. The Uh-oh. poopy corner. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, Calvio's like, please just get out. Go, go, yep. go, go take a shower. Ah. <laughs> or a bath. He wouldn't know what a shower he's, is. Go take a bath. He's, he's like, his first thing, he goes right towards his house. <laughs> And uh, oh, I'm sure. the townspeople. Gabriel Grumpily says, "You're welcome." <laughs> he just like raises his cane and swings it in the air a little bit. Um, <laughs> and with that, everybody, all the townspeople are coming out, and with uh, most of them saying, "Like, is it safe?" It's a, a myriad of thank yous, and they all eventually find their places of abode, their tents. Um, and uh, those heading towards the inn, and so on and so forth. So, Clover wants to try and find Anastasia. Okay. So Anastasia is one is one of the first ones to come out. So she's relatively easy to spot. Okay. So, what would you like to say? Uh, Clover would approach and say, um, it's done. Uh, the, the bad men who destroyed your village have been sent packing. And she's like, does, does, does that mean some of us get to go home now? Um, he says, um, it may be some time before, uh, before it's, uh, it's safe to go back back home um, if it's all the same uh, if you'd like to learn more magic uh, I will have some time soon uh, if you oh, would like yes. to to uh, study with me and, and learn some more um, yeah, definitely I've been playing around with that, that one trick you showed me and then she has like a little canteen to her side and she's like starts moving the water around and then puts it back in um, she said, uh, you, you mentioned Zerf in, uh, Andorra? Is that, did, did you? That's partially Aaron asking, because I, I can't remember if you mentioned um, him yeah, to we her. Or, yeah, he, like, wrote he did. A uh, he, oh, that's right. That's, yeah. yeah, we did. Um, I think Clover would, he would be willing to, like, help her prepare to show off to Zerf. Yeah. And she would she would definitely spend um, the evening with you, prepping some things, and such. Mm-hmm. And so, all right. Um, Can I check out this stupid fucking door again. Of, of course. With Kakira. Yeah. So Kakira and, and uh, Calvio and whoever else would like to join before you is the door beneath Fort Zaris. And I would explain to Kakira again the like as above so below bullshit stuff that's on it. Um, and then are how... the are the scorch marks still around the edge of the door? <laughs> there, there's yeah. definitely some scorch marks around the door. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> um. So just to let you know, Sega would have stayed too because he hasn't seen this door yet and he just knows okay. it's been well, causing commotion. Explaining it more in depth because I know you don't know any of this stuff. Okay, does Courtney like, know does or Courtney do I not need know to this explain? Or... Courtney does not know. Oh, ah. well then. Calvio right. is explaining it, but Aaron is going to DM explain it. 
<laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so, before you, let me pull up my my notes here. That's a long time ago. Um, um, so, there is an extremely large door on the other side of this room with inscription in three separate languages. Calvio goes on to explain that in the top, and if you can read any of these languages, you can, you, your character does so. But in the top, in Celestial, it reads, The Lord above will recognize the Lord of this land. In the center text, scrawling near the, through, through the middle of the door, basically, is, in common, the Lord of this land will be recognized as the Lord of this keep. In Abyssal, underneath the door, it says, But the master below will rise to challenge an unsuspecting upstart. Clearly they want whatever is behind this door. And we need to figure out how to get into this before we have to defend it again. And we have tried to brute force it. Uh, even Flint has spoken to us about the make of these stones. I, uh, I don't quite know what to make of this. Even... Uh, my magic to figure out what magic this is doesn't really tell me anything. For reference, did I use identify or detect magic last time? I think you used detect magic. Would I remember that? Because that was yeah. probably before... But it was it was well enough before... It was before that gap of memory, so you'd okay. remember that it was abjuration of sorts of an extremely powerful kind. Can I sit down and cast Identify with my hand on the door? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, taking some time, you finish lighting your candles and inscribing your runes. And in the moment you place your hand on the door, all of the spell components burn up in an arcane fire. And you see on this door that this door will only open to the supposed owner of the keep. Whoever has claimed it, this door will then open. I, I should say, it doesn't open to the, uh, to the owner of the keep. It's when somebody owns it, it will open so does anyone would calvio presume that well no hoarding said nobody so hoarding wouldn't be the one to own this well and it would have been open while he was down there right yeah uh, I, I suppose if he went to the door it would have been yeah so nobody owns this um nobody like currently um, or at least like we'd have I feel like that's a looking into the past answer there you get you get the sense that it's it's something deeper than just proclaiming that you own this keep um like the builder of the keep no it's like you get the sense that it's something is like tied to the land itself Right. Okay. Maybe it needs a key. Maybe we ask the regent door. for the the title or whatever to the land. Well, I guess was that once disputed territory or like this was not disputed it territory. It's, it's within this Horridine's Hamlet is like the edge of what is not disputed territory between 
the Hobgoblins and the Andorans. So it's within like Andoran territory, but the fort is currently in ruins and you would know that nobody is collecting taxes from the people of Horydine's Hamlet. Since they're sort of... So it's of like Alabama. <laughs> sure! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, okay. So it's more of a... noblistic thing than it is an actual owner. Okay. Okay. Um... Calvio owes me gold. Does that count? What's that? I said Calvio owes me gold. Does that count? No. I'm gonna get you your damn gold. <laughs> so oh then, are God. we talking about like family lineage that used to be here, kind of deal? Not necessarily. No. No. It's okay. just there has to be like a noble of sort. So. Calvio would look at Kakira and say, we need to make sure we get this. I agree. Whoever, it doesn't even matter. We we need to get behind this door. And I wouldn't say not necessarily a noble of sort. It seems to be tied directly to the keep and the land. Okay. Okay. I get, I get the feeling we're still missing something. What but... do you mean by keep? Just the so keep around you is ruined and there like it is a destroyed keep that's around you right so like a this is, okay okay like, I got you. we need yeah. to get the claim to the land and probably rebuild the fort and then we'll probably be okay just a guess Possibility. well we've pretty much gotten all we're going to out of this so everybody's okay for the most yeah. part a bit smelly yeah it smells real bad in there it yeah, Calvio was like. <laughs> so. Vika wouldn't happen by chance. Happen to know any like history or background that would help him out with any of this? I feel um, like it would be a little far fetched for Sega to know, but. Sega. Because you grew up with elves, may, it'd be really hard, but go ahead and make me a, a history check. Clobar can also make me a history check. Okay. Oh, well, that's a 21. dirty 20. Uh, Siga got dirty 20. Clobar got 21. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this kind of thing isn't ringing a whole lot of a bell for both of you. Like, you... Uh, Clover's not there, also. He's he's with Anastasia, right? That's right. That's yeah. Right. No, that's all good. Um, so, yeah, Siga, you're not really sure, but you definitely don't get a good feeling about it with the... Um, with the arcane circle that is in front of the door. Okay. Why? I, it, man, and I'm. And this is Calvio talking to Kakira and Siga at this point. Why would Helmina want once behind this door? Why would it be abjured so that only the the Lord, a quote unquote, of this land can open it? And why would a demon be protecting it? Man. I'm I'm not Hearing sure I want to know what's this, behind this. I don't remember any like stories based on anything similar to um, these kind of occurrences or anything. Make me a history check. What do we got? No. That's Damn it. Six. It's a six. Um Yeah, and not not so much. Like you know from um you've heard the name Srin before but you don't know much about it Javio would would kind of be frustrated and flustered that there's really nothing else he can do and kind of just be ready to leave 
at this point. I don't know. Maybe it's something... Sika's gonna... I'm gonna let Sika ponder this out loud. That maybe it's not something that needs to be opened per se, but something that needs to be guarded and not opened. Maybe it's a lock to keep something in. Hmm... It, well, was it a ward on the door, or was it just an enchantment? From what you've seen, there is it. the door itself gives off a strong sense of abjuration. Whatever Calvio would make of that is what Calvio would make of that. We need to sit on this one. Also... Aaron, real quick, is it possible to have the, um, essentially the door riddle, like, typed out? I was trying to oh, type of it course. with you, but I was too yeah. slow. <laughs> I have it, uh, I'll put uh, each bit of it in our chat here. Um, Danke. Or wait, no, I have it all right together. Let's pull this up. Perfect. Yeah. Spasiba. Jousta. So, I wonder. I worry that claiming ownership of this keep means fighting. What's on the other side of this door? Fighting, like. But the master below will rise to challenge an unsuspecting upstart. Meaning when somebody owns this and they open the door, there will be a challenger eventually. Maybe not then, but there will be a challenger. Or the land itself? I don't know, but... That's a good... Mm. It's I mean, because we've thought about an unsuspecting before. upstart. Because we we thought about buying this tower to renovate it and make it into our home in the first place, right? So it's not the first time it's crossed our mind. Well, let's not count our chickens before they hatch. We're not even sure that the regent's going to give this to us yet. Mm -hmm. It's a good bet, but I'd rather wait until we actually have it. That's fair. But then, who would come and fight us for it? Omina. I don't know. That's a bridge we'll cross when we get there, I suppose. So. You all, unless there's anything else you'd like to say or do, you will eventually find your places of rest. And um, the owner of the Cherry Blossom Inn allows you to stay there for free tonight on your way to um, Andorra. So, yeah, you all get the benefit of a long rest and yes. you wake up in the morning, the sun rising and you guys are all officially level 6, even though we did the uh, so with the long rest. Uh, we did the level up before. Yeah. So. Um, you all wake in the morning. What are you doing? Clover's going to send a message to Master Zimlin. All right. What are you going to say to Master uh, Deacon Zinlin? Um, he's going to say, uh, Master Zinlin, finally mastered this spell. Injured, engineered a great victory for hobgoblins and humans yesterday. Progress. Um, uh, we should speak uh, uh 
um, evil is uh, no um, chained one on the move. That's 24 words. All right. He would say, Clobar, it is good to hear from you. About time you learned this spell. I can be there on the morrow. Um, that is is that the end of his message? Or... He says that is disturbing to finish it. Um, Clover would send, use another spell slot to say, be there, question mark, Andorra, Zerf Tower. Um, would, would we not have enough time to get... It, it's three days, so you could tell him if you um, want to. Be there, um, three days travel from Zerf, uh, meet at her tower question mark um yes will speak hold on let me delete this old message so i know I'm, how many words i have yes we'll speak in person um uh orcs collaborating with Magister Sren. Uh, dangerous omens. And that's that's 23. Okay. Um, he would say, I will be there in three days time then. I don't know the name of Magister Sren. I will look into it. And that's what you get. All right. Um, Clover would use his last spell slot to send a message to his mother. Okay. Um, uh, mother, uh, great victory for humans and hobgoblins yesterday. Um, total. No. Uh, for humans and hobgoblins yesterday, um, uh, decisive battle, um, we all made it out okay, we'll return home soon, uh, must go to Andorra. Okay, remove the must. Must go to... Uh, shit. Okay, so I'm going to remove oh, decisive anyway, battle. Um, great victory for humans and hobgoblins yesterday. We all made it okay. We'll re return home soon. Must go to Andorra first. That's 23. Okay. Um, she would reply saying, Oh, Clobar, it is so good to hear that you are okay. I am glad our there was a victory. Please do come home soon. That's exactly twenty-five. Cool. Um. So, it's the start of the day. Um. Anastasia will walk up with walk up to you all. Um. What's that? What, uh, Heaven, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's being stupid again. I hit the long rest and it reset my HP and it won't hold. Oh. But I won't. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's being stupid. Like, I should have 68 and it's at, and it's like, no, 59. Okay, Why? I don't know how to fix it. I've tried messing with, like, the, the main <laughs> settings, settings when you're in edit character and like at the home page making sure it's set to manual and you you um, might just have to close the browser and i've done that too oh 
Yeah. Anyway, sorry. sorry just no, that's okay. I uh, have it. I wrote it down. <laughs> no worries. So, since Anastasia has come up to us, um, overnight, Calvio would have had like a dream or something, remembering some of his lost magic, and mm -hmm. would remember how to ca uh, cast Mage Hand. Aha! And would say, Anastasia, come here a second. And she would definitely approach. I would spin her around in front of me and like take her hand and then um, tell her the things to say and like move her hand for her and in the way that it should to see if she can cast Mage Hand. Um, she is unable to kind of get the motions that you're trying to teach her. She's like, what? What are you trying I'm to like show? I'm like physically moving her hand for her. Yeah, but she's she. Uh, it oh, doesn't, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work like that. Um, um Clover, seeing this, would walk over and say, uh, "Calvio, don't overload her." Um, one spell at a time. Yeah, but she can do one already. She's like, I'll, I'll, I can, I can keep trying. I can, and I can do cool things with the water. See? And she starts moving the water around a bit again. Extremely enamored with her new trick. I would say, copy me, and then I would do like each hand sign, really slow, like hand show it, stop, show it. <laughs> Well, there are vocal and somatic things, so sort of, yes. Um, oh my God. And then would have her repeat the things to say back to me. Okay. And then I would say, like this, and I would do it as slow as possible to make it work and cast Mage Hand. So, um, are you going to cast Mage Hand or trying to get her to do it? I am casting it to show her. Okay. And then ha and see if she can do it. So, um, not dropping her original spell, you watch as she's like currently trying to copy you with the hand motions, and you just watch as the water is just moving around with her hand currently. <laughs> she, she just she doesn't seem to be getting it right now. <laughs> I'll I'll uh, have my mage hand come over and pat her on the head. And... <laughs> Like, oh, Maybe next time. Ho hopefully I can learn um, how to do that someday. Do you remember it? I remember what it looks like. Could Clover say, try and teach her, like, have her dispel the water and then try and teach her from, from scratch? You can definitely suggest that to Calvio. If, if, we have Clover. two wizards. He's not the only teacher. Yeah, you, do you have Mage Hand, though? Yes. Oh, you do? Then, yeah, of course. I just don't use it. I see, I see you don't use it, so I didn't know you had it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Clover would have her try and learn it from scratch rather than trying to move her hand. Yeah, she she's not getting it right now. Uh, he says, uh, don't worry. It'll come yeah. with time. She just nods. Um... Um, would you like to travel with us to Andorra? She's like, um, yes, that's that's actually why I was coming up here. Um, I <laughs> don't really have anybody. Um, Aldra was watching me a bit, but, um, and Aldra is like, at this point, scurrying up to catch up. And she's like, please don't tell me that she just has to go with you. Um, Clobar says, uh, well, I would say that with us is probably about the safest place that she could be. And then she turns towards Calvio and says, do you really think that's the case? That's the open road. Well, I, uh, I don't, I don't think it would be the worst idea. Um, is the army coming with us to Andorra? The army has like kind of shown up at this point. They're around. You guys would definitely move faster than they would to get there, though. 
Since they're not in like a forced march sort of deal. Um, Calvi would say just uh, sticking with us would be would be a good idea if that's really what you want to do. Uh, we certainly won't let anything happen to you. Um, Is the entire group around at this point. I would I would say so unless everybody has specific things they want to be accomplishing that we haven't uh, gotten to. I would I would definitely be looking at the group at this point. Clover would say to the group, um, I have news. Um, this morning I spoke to my master in Orealis. Um, I informed him of recent events. Uh, he will meet us in three days time at Zerf's Tower. I okay. assume to, to Kakira that seemed crazy since Orialis is so far away. That would definitely pique Kakira's interest. Like, that, it, to, even with flying at times, it took Kakira uh, the better part of two weeks to get there. I mean, but she's around magic users anyway, and she probably assumes, oh, okay, well, he probably... It's, he knows damn, some magic it's, or something. it's not unheard of, but it's extremely rare to be able to teleport like that. Um, Clobar bends down, lin, leans down to uh, Anastasia and says, uh, You might just meet my master, who taught me magic when I was not much older than you. <laughs> and she, she would... Uh... At that, she she's very excited, and is saying like, "Oh, I would, I'm I'm very excited to meet these new people." But, um, is there anything else you guys would like to say before moving on, getting ahead of the army early in the morning? I'm the going Flint to catch fine seed. You're gonna go do what, Flint? I'm gonna cast Fine Steed, but first I will be making uh, breakfast. For everybody. All right. So you're making breakfast. Yep. Would it be Sorry. possible to Fine. count waiting for breakfast as a short rest? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Since you did that at the beginning. Uh, what is Marsica doing? Well, uh, 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 well, I don't know what Marsica's doing, but Heaven is currently confused by Fine Steed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll figure. You'll you'll see it in just a second. Um, <laughs> just need to know if Flint made Flint food or regular food, and if it's Flint food, what kind of bullshit Flint food is it this time? Flint is kind of out of the is currently out of the the roast. Yeah, I, I need uh, ingredients to be able to uh, so no Flint food. Okay, make better Flint food. I can do my basic Flint food, which is just the chef's eat when I cook, which. Uh, if you eat it, I think you just get like an extra D8 of food or health when you use it. That one. Yeah, when you okay. when you uh, do a short rest, you can consume it and eat his food. Yeah, eat the food, okay. and then it will. So it's like pseudo Flint food. Y basically, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so Flint you, food light. <laughs> you currently have a ration that will restore an extra, I believe, D8 of hit points when you do a short nice. rest. Um, Blue diet Flint. Food diet Flint food. So, Flint, as Flint. you finish your cooking, passing this food out to everybody, you step to the side, go ahead and describe yourself casting the spell and what your steed looks like. I kind of just, like, sit on the ground and, like, put my hands up doing, like, the okay thing. I'm both my knees and act like I'm meditating for a minute. And uh, a big horn sheet kind of just pops out of the ground in front of me. And it's uh, got like these huge horns that wrap around. It's already got a little bit of a saddle on it. And it's got um, this greenish color to it as it is a uh, fake creature. So. <laughs> Bad ass. Bad ass. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Ah. Flint like, looks not. over at Calvio and all the other magic users. And uh, it's like, finally, a ride of my own. I need a picture. Like, you didn't like my disc? 
No, the disc was good, but old mashed potato here as he slaps the ram side will be very, very loyal. I'm a potato. <laughs> you um, called your I ram got... mashed potato? Yes. I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I Zika, love it. seeing funny... this, will probably come up and be like, mashed potato? And then... <laughs> Like, well, at least you won't need rides from me anymore. And then kind of look at you and then look at your big horn sheep and with a gesture, like reaching out to like, can I pet? <laughs> mashed potato will love the pets. And in Dwarvish, I kind of like speak to mashed potato and I'm just like, everyone here is friendly. <laughs> <laughs> then, so you got probably... I don't know. How would a bighorn sheep react to Sega? <laughs> How, however, Flint wants the bighorn sheep to react to Sega. That's fair. <laughs> are, are you coming up with like a carrot in your hand or anything else? I mean, I wouldn't have food on me, but Flint hands you unless... a carrot when you're walking up, then and like. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, mashed potato is just very very excited for food. <laughs> you guys definitely here for this like cute fluffy sheep that he can just kind of pet <laughs> oh no <laughs> that's amazing so flint no longer needing to be um Carried on the floating disc, has a steed of his own for these long trips. And you guys all set off towards Andorra. Um, okay. Can. This is something that I wanted to do before we went to sleep oh, last sure, night, sure. but I just didn't get a chance, and I figured now would be a good time for me to like, back up for a second. Of course. Um, Because Sega. After yesterday's events and after we all get settled, he would have wanted to knock on, like, Calvio's door and make sure that he was okay and chat with him for a little bit. Okay. Like, before all of that shit just happened, basically? This would have been, like, previous night, right before we all, like, went to bed. Okay. Is what I was yeah, what I was aiming for, but then we all got carried away, and so I mean, I'm backing I'm down. up a little Are bit. Are you okay with that? Of course, of course. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so Sika would have come and knocked on your door. <laughs> okay. Uh, Calvio would have opened it and looked kind of surprised that you were at the door. Um, like, oh, well, we'll come in and then open the door. Sika would have said, I don't mean to startle you. I just know that you were overwhelmed earlier and I didn't want to be overbearing. So I wanted to come and check on you before we all went to bed for the night and see just how you were doing. Like, but really, how are you doing? <laughs> Javio would sit on the bed um, at this and say, honestly, I, I don't know. I know that sometimes I don't have control and it's like I'm watching myself go without having any control over it. Um, I know there's been a couple of times that there's kind of blanks in what I know what's happening. Um, earlier, I had a flash of some creature on my chest at the mention of that name. Um, but I, I don't know why it freaked me out. I don't. I still don't know what's happening to me. And whoever this other person is, 
I know nothing about. They don't like to talk. They speak in riddles half the time. Or they just, you know, may as well not be present, but they're they're present and I it's a lot. I don't really know. It's weird to not know yourself. Sega says that's totally fair. Uh, he wouldn't say totally. He would say that's fair. <laughs> Courtney would say totally. <laughs> I still don't know if I understand the new things that I can do. I suddenly have urges for fire. Um, I have a great like for dancing, whereas I never really did before. I have to hold back insults a lot, and I'm not sure why. We'll note that he's noticed that one. <laughs> and I just... I know Zerf said that I'm not useless, and after the past few fights, I know that I'm not useless, but I don't know if it's me or whoever else is in my head. And there's magic that I've known that I don't know, and the Calvio would um, like try to show um Sega mage hand at this point and would try to cast that spell but not knowing it at this point nothing would happen good segue haha <laughs> <laughs> retcon said segue <laughs> um and you would see Calvio just have another immensely disappointed look on his face for not being able to Cast Mage Hand. Sego would go, no, no, no. Don't be... Don't be disappointed. You know, sometimes... <laughs> sometimes in order... To live through some of the crazy experiences that you did um, when I first got here and stepped into this interesting group of people, you just, you'll get it back. Ziga so wants, uh, he'll be like, please. Don't stress yourself out about it. You are... He, he's... Ugh. Calvio Courtney is struggling with words. Not the Calvio end. would look at you and say, Have you ever experienced true loss? Sega... Sega will reply with who hasn't. It's part of life. I'm not saying that you can't be upset about it and you can't be sad about it and frustrated, but that does not mean that you can't pick your feet back up and relearn and become better than what you were before you lost your magic before you lost parts of yourself you get to rebuild that you get to become what you want to become do I become who I want to become or who my head tenant wants me to become and that's my problem everybody 
assumes I'm okay because they see me and they see me deal with everything and somehow I manage to hold back what's in my head but you don't know what it's like to feel like you are not in control of your own body what it's like to have another person in your head you don't know what it's like to feel like you're not even yourself anymore you how can you tell me that you have that everybody has experienced loss when I don't even know what I lost. I don't don't know know who half of me is. I, I don't know why I'm this way. I I can't even tell you who I'm going to be tomorrow when I wake up. Caveat was getting very flustered. (laughs) Clearly. Zeke is still like calm as a cucumber. Not surprising. He he's nodding very slowly. Um, and he's like, Yes, we may not have experienced loss within the same way. Um and Sega says <laughs> with a little bit of a smirk like you've looked at me right you i've never seen another one like me this is, i don't even know where i come from i know my parents that have raised me but i don't look anything like them don't you think that ever prickles the back of my mind in that sense you know, just kind of nods and says uh, I don't really know my parents either and he guess says that is definitely not an easy thing he says now however you have great friends here that all really care about you and You don't have to do this alone. You say that no one understands. Well, maybe you're not letting them understand. You're allowed to be open with them and lean on them. Be as open as whoever this other person is will let me. Maybe we can find a way to create more of a harmonious bond between the two of you instead of a mystery as to what we've got here. That'd be entertaining. (laughs) Do you know of any lineage where an elf would be related to a human? Sega know anything like this? Sega knows half elves exist, right? But that is th- that's not exactly what is going on with Calvio's situation, right? I mean, it, you would get the sense or is that, that pretty that much what it is. It, it's base. It, the only real way for something like that to happen is that yeah, the, somewhere the, along the way, yeah, okay. like way the hell long time ago, there was an elven ancestor. And it, the line just got so diluted by the time. Diluted. It, I shouldn't okay. say diluted, it. but it, there's not a lot of elves. You know what I mean? Yeah. So are half elves like common enough that I would know what those are, or they're kind of rare, but you'd know. You'd know they exist. Oh well, then I probably wouldn't have asked that question if I had known. Um. Sega would Sega would have known that your tenant was an elf, right? It's up to Calvio if you would have. I like. Would you have 
would you have said something along those lines? I can't remember. I don't think it's Probably. like honestly come up. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think okay. it's really straight up come up. I I mean, I'm not even sure. Yeah, Calvia would know. He um, hasn't talked. He's been very hesitant to talk about his head tenant so far. Okay. Calvio would. So then. I'm assuming you're asking. Well, like, it's... okay, then I'll rephrase it in a way that makes sense. So then Sega would have asked, like, so, so what, what do you know about your head tenant then? Or your other half? <laughs> Do you trust me? Can Calvio willingly relinquish control to Loran? Of course. Is that a thing? Yeah. Okay. That's however however you want to handle this, man. That, this oh, okay. I don't know you. if I, I don't know if I can actually yeah. do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so you would see, see Calvio uh, close his eyes for a minute and. Uh, he would open them back up with a totally different look on his face and then uh, you see him get a smirk on his face and he just goes well aren't you an interesting one there you go probably sit there and uh, kind of lean his head in and turn and be like hmm he must Calvio be Calvio's leans his head in. other half. And Calvio leans his head in, like <laughs> almost like touching noses at this point. Yes. So what's your name? Luren. Does Luren know about Dragonborn? I was just about to message you about that. Um, okay. So, um... Dragonborn um, are a legend at this time. Like, they are not necessarily more of a, um, like, a legend that people know that they once existed. But they're beginning to fade into legend at this point with Loran. But he would know for sure that they existed at one point. Okay. And... Loren would just kind of, and he would know that there were um, there were stories of Dragonborn being the creations of. Um... Go ahead and make me a history check to see how much Loren would know. Sorry, I keep hitting my mic. Oh, you're fine. Uh, seventeen. Nice. Um, he would know that. He is not listening to this. Dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's fair. Um are basically the magical creations. Um, they were first created by um, archetists when they found um, some sort of dragon egg or something. And then they created this uh, race with magic. So, Cal so Calvio, who was really Luran, would kind of like have a real interest but but they don't have tails there's the thing Sika has a tail this is the difference between the two gotcha and you would see calvio just kind of or loran just kind of like lean and look at the tail then lean back and just curious where did you get the tail Um, Sika's gonna be like, Perfect. I've had it this whole time. Where do you come from? Sanctuary Grove. Does he, does Lauren know about the druids there? Uh, yeah, he okay. knows about the druids there. 
with the loners in the woods. I should have expected. I suppose you're one of them. Yeah. I suppose. Not quite a loner these days anymore. Is this uh, a form you take, or is this truly you? 100%. Lurin, like, pokes you <laughs> to check. Uh, Sika starts to get sassy, and he's like, you want to do a whole inspection? And he, like, lifts up his gums so you can see his teeth, and, like... <laughs> You want to buy a sundial? Like, wiggles his fins, you know, like, what do you want? I would do an inspection, but, um, I'd be afraid of seeing how real you actually are. You have a fair point. Can be a little icy. And he blows some cold air in your face. So that's true as well. Interesting. You have my attention. What do you want? He, uh, will be like, okay, I'm honored. Um, a little like bow oh, thing. He <laughs> rolls his eyes and says, okay, tell me about yourself. I'll tell you something about me. And you answer a question I have. You can kind of squints. Oh, wow. This was easy. Okay. Man. What do you want to know? <laughs> first because I like talking um, so I once was a wizard which one is more than that oh okay uh, I, uh, I like fire I like dancing and um One, these are things that I already knew. I'm going to need something a little deeper than that if you want me to answer a question. Okay, fine. Maybe you should be more detailed when you ask questions. Um, Aaron, <laughs> does Loren know that she is trying to get at how he ended up in this position? Um, I would assume so. How much of that does Loran remember? Um, he remembers Ismael uh, asking him for a favor. He was nearing his uh, deathbed, and he agreed to help Ismael because he knew something would be at stake at some later date. Okay. So Loran would say, okay, you want the, the juicy bits, fine. Um, so I lived my life, the good one, and I had a, fan, a friend, and come around every so often, and uh, he asked me for a favor, to help, and I figured, what have I got to lose? So I helped, something about something at stake later and blah 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 usually when he talks it's important and truthful so I just listen and uh <laughs> I don't remember things for a long time and then here I am in this not me is that what you were looking for 
I wasn't looking for anything in particular. Oh. <laughs> that kind of seems like you were. <laughs> I just wanted to know about you. Just trying to get to see who you are. No one really knows you that well yet, so... <laughs> Well, I usually don't get to drive. He's quite, uh, sturdy up here. Well, maybe if you would talk to him from time to time, you know, you might get let out of your cage. Well, I'm not in a cage. <laughs> this is no cage. <laughs> I suppose you were in one before. Maybe not now. You stuck it with been me. <laughs> <laughs> So, is it my turn? What's your question? Do you know where you come from? And I don't mean where you were born. Do you know? You're welcome to enlighten me. I just know as a druid... You would find it rather shocking to find. Not all living things are as natural as they seem. This is true. You have definitely caught Siga's attention. He doesn't quite know how to respond in this moment, but so he's just kind of sitting there. But it's also curious. Lauren kind of laughs. <laughs> I see you have caught your interest. Sega says, I'm not going to lie, I'm definitely curious. Sit on that. We'll talk again soon. And then uh, you see his head kind of, Calvio's head kind of drop. And then he comes back blinking. And Calvio's, it's actually Calvio this time, and he's like, He gave it back. He gave it, he never <laughs> gives it back. Huh. We'll chuckle and be like, Well, Loran definitely speaks in riddles. You're right about that one. You too, huh? I don't know. He seems to be a little bit of a, a show-off. Show off. You might be I able to blood. talk to him that way. He needs some flattery in his life, sounds like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Did he say anything interesting? I mean, he piqued my interest. He asked if I knew where I came from. And not just where I was born. So, you could say yes. He was also very confused about my tail. So, I suppose we'll figure that one out at a later date when he comes have back. Tails? Huh? huh? Don't you all have tails? What do you mean, all? I'm the only one there is. I don't know. <laughs> Why is he so weird? Okay, well... Well, uh, Sego will probably say that I'm sure you're tired. <laughs> quite. Sego will nod and say I appreciate you being honest with me. Not sure if it was honest or open. <laughs> but I guess... Uh... It could be both. I guess we'll talk about this again soon. I'm like in my mind going, what did you say to her? What did you do? <laughs> Him. Oops. That's hilarious. Maybe I should just make that a Calvio thing. Like Calvio is terrible at pronouns. 
<laughs> oh, and then no. I could like <laughs> make my <laughs> terrible <laughs> intellect cannon. <laughs> So, um, if there is nothing else you guys like sorry. to talk about, sorry. no, that's fine. Nope, no, we're worries. good. We've hijacked this long enough. I'm so sorry. That, that hard, totally but, fine. Yep. Totally fine. Um, but you, you asked me to go in, so I went in hard. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> um, so, you guys make your way out of Andorra. Flint on his new steed, Sega. Considering the implications of the whole strange tail comment. And Anastasia in tow with all of you. Um, you all, the um, two days of travel, or uh, what was it? Three days of travel to Andorra are uneventful. You all make your way to the familiar city excited to see the walls again peering out of the forest getting in through the gates um, a few guards themselves are you can see them hushedly whispering to each other as they see you come past you have no problems getting into the city. You are in Andorra. It is about midday. What all would you like to do? To go straight to the region, I guess. Okay. Should we drop Anastasia yeah. off first? Oh, yeah, that's probably smart. Oh. <laughs> Anastasia is with you. <laughs> go to we gotta go to Zerf Daycare. Oh God! No. She's gonna be so happy about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've got to meet Master Zinlin. Yep. Um. So, you guys come in and you approach Zerf's tower. The familiar creature appears beforehand, uh, before you, and is saying, oh, you back. Fabio just, just like, looks and says, arms. do we have to do this every time? <laughs> we have to do this every time. You're back? And then he, like, turns Can I not get, like, a pass? No. <laughs> Gilbert, just I, I am, like, purposely getting in this thing's way every time it... It, it tries to look at Flint. I'm like, hey, hey, as, no, hello. As as soon as, like, Flint says Gilbert, it, all of the eye stocks kind of, like, come over and are, like, focusing in on Flint for a minute. It's like, <laughs> fine. And it, like, disappears. <laughs> Calvio was, like, going to poke an eye as soon as he disappeared. <laughs> and the door, uh, not a moment later, the door swings open. And um, at the table... You see, um, what was I going to say? You see Zerf sitting at the entry table. Sorry, my I had a brain fart for a second there. And drinking some tea. Yeah, I'm trying, it's like me hitting my forehead like, work, work. Um, and okay. drinking tea there. Um, you see her. And she sees all of you come in. She's like, please. Please, yes, come in, come in. Um, I hear there's news about town. And she turns towards Clobar and she says, um, Your master let me know that he would be coming in today and he should be uh, here this evening. Uh, Clobar nods and he's got Anastasia by the hand. And as, as and... soon as she sees Anastasia, she would like instantly be like, now, who is this that you are bringing me? Um, Kobor says, um, Zerf, um, this is Anastasia. Um, she So was, soon? Um, he kind of pats Anastasia and he says, show her. And instantly Anastasia, um, pulls out <clears throat> the water and she's like, almost as if she'd been rehearsing this for several days and um zerf says um 
Now that is a wonderful trick, my dear. Have you come to learn? And she's like, she kind of puts the water back in. She's like, yes. She will then turn towards Flint and she says, now you see why I actually put, uh, brought Elgash on. And she whisper, or like, you hear a whistle. And she says, Elgash, we have a new arrival. I need you to get her situated. And he comes rushing down the stairs and very confused, like some, uh, some, what's it, not smoke, what's it called? Residue from smoke is on his face. Soot. Soot, thank you. He has some soot on his face from a, an experiment of sorts. And he says, Um, isn't she a bit young? And Zerf would say, Um, it's good to catch them when they're young. And show her to a room. And Before Elgash takes off, I like walk up to him, put my hand on his shoulder. I'm like, I did it. I summoned a ram. <sighs> Wait, I told you about that ages ago. But I, I, I couldn't help but remember it when we were in battle and I saw the cavalry and it was just, that's got to be so convenient. I mean, it is. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you figured that out, my friend. Thank you for your are, knowledge are, and tips on it. Are you in town long? I just kind of look at the group and it's like... In town as long shrug. as uh, uh, we're able. Come by and, and see me sometime when I have more time to to, uh, to speak. It'll be good to catch up. I just pat him on the back. I'm like, of course. And... Yeah. Uh, to Zerf. Go for it. Oh, uh, Clover says to Zerf, um, she, she is young, yes. But she, uh, she has tremendous potential. She picked up that spell within a day. <laughs> she, um, she would say again, grabbing her crystal ball and holding it, and said, "That is, that is good. We may need somebody like her in the future." He says, gonna be a bad bitch. Speaking of the future, <laughs> we have uh, made some important discoveries, and that is part of the reason I have asked uh, Master Zinlin to join us. He made mention of the Chained One. Um, you will remember uh, these. Uh, the group before I I joined had investigated some uh, some nearby ruins with uh, with a statue uh, dedicated to the chained one and a night hag that had um, had uh, afflicted poor Calvio here um, on the person of one of the warlords of the orc army. They had received orders from that same night hag. That is disturbing indeed. Do you know what her purpose was in the city? Um, he says, um, if what my friends here have told me is correct, she is working on some project, uh, collecting souls. Instantly she made enchanted cookies that brainwash people instantly at the collecting souls bit her face goes white her eyes wide she says you go see the regent I need to do some research and she like runs upstairs um Clover says the hag's name uh, I think I don't know if you guys did or not Clobar was a purposefully yeah. avoiding saying her name to avoid triggering Calvio. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. 
Um, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, so I'll you are now a... And tell her the hag's name through telepathy. Uh, and she says, Helena, that, uh, that might help. Thank you. Uh, responding back. Um, um, so we're off to see the regent? Off to see the wizard. Wonderful regent of Andorra? <laughs> I don't know about wonderful, but, you know. Yeah. He is a regent. <laughs> he, some people might think he's wonderful. Some might think he's kind of an ass. Um, Apparently they wanted him dead, so. He wasn't yeah. super nice to Clobar last time they met. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, Fair point. So, heading in. Can we you... stop by the the Bandor Bandoran Andoran Bank of Gold <laughs> briefly? The Bandoran <laughs> Ank of Gold. Yes, you may. Yeah. <laughs> That's the rival chain. <laughs> <laughs> the off-brand bank yeah of course you can easily stop by and get pull out uh, any amount of money that you want I'm pulling out 700 gold and giving it to Kira. <laughs> 725 right. excuse me oh <laughs> interest <laughs> so she just she to just bite you she chuckles and says well thank you very much you're welcome <laughs> jerk <laughs> oh my gosh Hang on, i've got to do math so you guys make your way into the um you're escorted into the throne room and before you standing off to the side of the throne is uh the familiar regent and he says so i take it your expedition was successful some word has reached me um we are in your debt um clobar steps forward he squints his eyes and says you may speak um. This victory would not have been possible without the assistance of uh, of the Eyes of White. He says, um, the battlefield, we experienced something never before seen in history. Something truly special. Uh, Andorans and Hobgoblins fighting alongside each other. Uh, um, certainly this battle will will go down in history. Um, I would like you to consider reaching out to the eyes of white to begin talks of some sort of agreement. I don't require any payment for my part in the uh, in the uh, in this undertaking. Uh, however, I would ask of you to please consider this request. He says, consider it considered. I will await the report of my captain to see his view of things as well. You stopped the orcs from raiding our countryside. Apparently they had a much larger force than we had anticipated. There is a reward that is due. Your friend has relinquished his portion. But so you may distribute it however it you wish. But a few options per se. Folks such as yourselves, I see that you do not like to be tied down, but I also see that you care for this land. Hording's Hamlet is positioned in a very strong st strategic location, and Fort Zeris is set to begin reconstruction. 
I have yet to name a duke of the area. You may either, the lot of you, I would require one of you to become the duke of this land, whereas the rest of you will be its wardens per se, I guess, and I would fund the construction of a small complex in the area for you. Or you may each take 1500 gold pieces each. You will be able, if you do take the land, you would be able to collect taxes to line your coffers, spend it however you see fit. I would require a small percentage of that tax, as this is within my kingdom. You would be responsible for raising defenses of a sort. I would send a small group to help you defend it as it is. But that is my offer as it stands. Can we have some time to discuss this? You... You may have your time that you need. We are busy here. Bring me your answer on the morrow. Um, Clobar uh, would say... Um, uh, your Majesty, I... I, we heard on the way here that you um, had come under attack. Um, has the perpetrator been identified? As he walks forward, you notice at this point that there is a slight limp. Um, and says, they have not been identified. But my sources are looking into the sly few. Um, uh, Clobar says, uh, if there is anything that we can do to uh, bring this uh, fiend to justice, please uh, bring it to our attention. You may conduct your own investigations if you wish. If you find anything that is of use to us, let uh, let my guard know. Clobar nods. We know that they use the area just uh, nearby Coot's Reliquary as a meeting place. That's the place where you saw the wyvern. I was wondering. My brain was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait <Thank you>. a <laughs> second. Um, because so intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is... Um, oh! Kakira, Siga, and Marsika... You, I forgot to mention this as you guys were coming into the city. You would have noticed um, people are coughing a little bit more than usual. COVID-19! <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, it's the plague. It's the food. The plaque, you. <laughs> okay. The plaque. I was Not just thinking food. about that, too. Uh, I guess Kikira, you want to take this one? Because you can go there. Well, I was just thinking about the, the food and how so many people were eating it, and I was like, I've only got three spell slots of remove curse. <laughs> it would take a long time to fix, assuming that's the problem. So, um, do you, uh, what are you guys doing at this moment? At this point, um, the regent has given you the information 
and he is beginning to tend to his other duties. Um, we should unless there's anything about you... the decision we have to make. I feel like we have some things to talk about. And so, Let's um, find a tavern and talk. <laughs> so, you guys make your way back out of the palace and which tavern are you going to spend time in the pilgrim and the scroll or the sword and mug why don't we just mug. go to flint's place that's what i was gonna say you too. Get, you could you we could also go place. yeah you guys could also go to the fireforge residence yeah that's i that. feel like that's kind of a seems like that's the option yeah, badass thing to go. be able to do. Just like, hey, let's just go show up at the fire forges and chill there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Question. Answer. How much would a house in the inner ring cost? A house in the inner ring would cost about 10,000 gold. To start. And is that like a like, wood house? Like a stone house? The, I, I should say that's a nice house in the inner ring. It would, if you just want, depending on how big you want to go... Um, a, a stone house would probably cost you upwards of uh, like a small one for one person, about two to three thousand gold with uh, a gold a month upkeep. What about the that like three story monstrosity I sent in the? Uh, oh, you sent other... something in there. Oh, yeah, God. I Let designed me something. Uh, where are we at here? Oh man, that you guys talk so much in here while I'm not paying attention. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> you should about. Should be able to go to images and just find it that way. That would be the smart thing. Instead of having to scroll. Oh, that's that's a nice thing. Um, if you want to do that in the oh load, please. Something like that in the inner ring is upwards of, I, yeah, about 10,000. 10, 10 to 15,000, depending on how elaborate you go. Hmm. Duly noted. Globar is poor, but, like very poor, so. Yeah. And that's if it's like already pre built. Um, you may, if you wanted to design that thing specifically, I'd have mm -hmm. to do some other math to see like how much contractors would be and all this other stuff. Like, okay. so depending you on how, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's your fantasy? Clover <laughs> didn't necessarily mean to say no to the money. He just got caught up in the heat of the moment. <laughs> but <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, uh, the, uh, um, the regent would would have would have distributed Kobar's share among all of you. It's like a lump sum. And so, um, you guys make your way through the inner ring, and um, you get to the Fireforge residence. Off in the distance, you hear a town crier saying, "Hear ye, hear ye." If you have business in the shanty towns, do your best to keep your distance. There is a disease making its way. Clobart, kind of just with an earshot of the group, makes a dark joke and says, Yeah, it's called humanity. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you not just try to bring two armies together? He says, look, it has been a very dark week and a half. I am coping how I can. He says, do you realize how many times we could have died in the past in the past month? As he's going to look him in the eyes and say, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's I'm lucky that I didn't shit myself in front of the council. Calvio says, you're lucky you didn't have your soul ripped in half and someone else put in its place. Clobar looks Calvio in the eyes 
and says, Calvio is not looking at you. Calvio is still walking away. <laughs> like, did you die? Said that. Technically, yes. Clobar says, You did not. He did. Technically, you, yes. You he should be dead. thankful he you died. were still here. Because Kikira. I didn't had... say I wasn't. I just like turned around, like, Can you guys not do this in front of my moms? Your mom. <laughs> It's gonna be like, at, at okay, this, children, we can the, duke this out later. The door opens and says, uh, "You see Flint's mother peering out and saying." Re real quickly, I just whisper, "I'm like, it's about to get loud." <laughs> she says, <laughs> "Well, it's about damn time. It sounds like all of you need some food. Get in here." <laughs> I just walk in and like give her a little hug. I'm like, "Good to see you too, mom. We beat the orcs." I can see that. You, I'm glad you did. I was getting a little worried. I am here for Flint's southern mama. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, Flint's well, mom going. Chat. Yeah, she she oh, sets sorry, you down at the table, and she is currently cooking up a storm. Like you think you think you thought that Flint could cook really well, you're seeing where he gets it from. Damn. In, in the kitchen. Flint, like, walks up to a drawer near uh, the kitchen table and, like, pulls out a, like, nice, fancy, big bib, sits it... at the table and, like, brushes his beard out of the way and, like, puts this big bib on, pulls out a special fork and knife, and he's, like, freaking ready for Mama's cooking. She, and you <laughs> saw, as, as you were getting into the kitchen... You knew to act fact, fast because as you were pulling some drawers open, she was like with one hand with a spatula about to smack you <laughs> since she thought you were going for a different drawer. Um, and so she brings out a wonderful array of food. It is the best you've eaten in the past week. And um, you have a chance to talk here. So. Oh, what's everyone thinking? Clover says, um, <laughs> before we make our decision, I would like to hear what Deacon Zinlin and uh, Zerf have to say. We may have our next course of action ahead of us after we're speaking with them. So we're not talking about this? Uh, uh, that's what we came here for? <laughs> I I would still like to talk about it. At least yeah, you guys know... could talk a little bit about it and like what what y'all are thinking, what has happened. Of course, you can plan as much as you can right now. Yeah, and then you know if we get news in the morning, we can we can always change our minds before we tell. Yeah, I mean it's not like we're going to back to tell him today what we're doing. He said come yeah. back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But Z Zinlin's going to be there in the evening. So correct. we're going to have that talk tonight. Yeah. Correct. So but we you can guys, discuss you, now. You have you and... have a chance to talk about it now to see where you stand as a group beforehand. But um, the knowledge you get may change. But it, it is a good idea to chat a bit to see where everybody stands as it as it is right now. Yes. Clover says point blank. Um, I have no interest in owning uh, or controlling Horadine's Hamlet. You've already given up your share, though. Um, Clobar <laughs> says, um, well, if if the five of you wish to stay in Hordeen's Hamlet and be uh, landowners, then this is where we part ways. The Okay, so point of clarification. The, it is going to take some time to build. Right, it takes it would take a long time to build, um, a couple of months probably, and you would have people that take care of it if you were out and about doing things. It's not like you got you guys don't have to be there all the time. You are still going about and um, can do things in the world. And if it is threatened, if the area is threatened, you can either leave it to those there that's already defending it. Or you can come back and defend it yourself. That's totally up to you. You know, well, it, it's an feels like 
even though we can leave, that it's not necessarily a good look to just leave land that you supposedly control all the time. Like if if the Eyes of White didn't spend most of their times at time in Ubask, he feels like it would betray their duty to uh, to that to that territory. So he feels like in good consciousness if he were to have his name on land and he wasn't there to defend it he would feel like he was uh, breaking his code uh that's fair but it is it, it is it would be possible to get back in time when things needed to be defended like sort of deal so, um, I think I like the idea of having Fort Zeris just because I think it's a good thing to have, like, somewhere that we can recollect and somewhere to stay when we are back on this portion of the country. Um, and I definitely think it would be important to hire caretakers and, like, business people who could take care of the tax stuff uh, if we did go that route. So, and then the the for the like, I really like the idea of getting fortifications that we could do to protect the town if we did do that. Like, could we? You know, I'm I'm kind of picturing like Bree in Lord of the Rings, like get a little wall up around Horridian's Hamlet, so that way it's more protected for future attacks. Since it is kind of right in the middle and it is a strategic place, uh, I don't know if that would be possible though, Aver. Oh, they're, they're, sure. like those things are definitely yeah. possible, especially with all the, the lumber that's around. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, taxes and, uh, that we we collect can maintain that. Yeah, the mm-hmm. taxes you collect can maintain that. It would become a place where if if a fort is built, people might start gravitating it towards it more, and um, more people to allow for more things to happen there. Um, I can and... get some of the fire forges to come down as blacksmiths for the place, too. Definitely. Yeah, um, cool. And then also, the um, he said there would be one person to hopefully assuage some of Clobar's fears on that. There would be one person that would be conferred upon as, as like, Duke of it right? It is that person's responsibility. And then it would just serve as a base for all of you to hang out. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how I'm picturing it. That's how I, that's why Marsica would like it. And we get the land and the fort is also already being paid for for mm-hmm. the, the repairs and renovations, so we don't even have to pay for it. And granted, we are adventurers, but I, I think the town understands and knows that we're adventurers, and just building that fort and getting the resources to actually provide for this town and potentially bring in more visitors and allow the town to have maybe a boom um i think would be very helpful even if we're not there all the time have you guys played um pillars of eternity no no michael has you know the fort the beginning that that's what i'm trying to go for with this right so there would would be be yeah there's a steward that's there and they will take care of things while you're gone and they will make sure that things are taken care of and things are ran right and they will be like your second in command sort of it would definitely be interested in that especially since these are his his people i mean calvio is interested in being the duke that's conferred um because he wants to he wants to help his people because Flint is too (laughs) God damn it! Well, he's from Andorra too. This is this is his homeland as well. So like, he I mean, he I totally wants to I like lived in fire forge it in. <laughs> like be that that saving face for him a little. Yeah, that's a, that's up to you guys to duke that out. If if it's something you guys uh, go uh, for. It. God damn it! <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm. I don't know. I I just not a huge fan of this idea. I feel like I feel like Andorra should protect Horadine's Hamlet regardless like of whether we get paid or not. You know, I feel like they should fortify that area which they know now is a a target for the orcs. He's he's going to do it either way. 
right? It's whether or not you guys want that responsibility or not. He's going to send somebody to start building fortifications. So we can right. either do it, do all the work ourselves and not get paid, or we can get paid and the work gets done anyway. No, we are getting paid. Yeah, you, but the we pay, have no either control way over what paid. happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the amount of control you guys want over the situation. And... Well, I thought he said it was either I'll pay you fifteen hundred each or. Uh, so he he'll. Taxes. Yeah, you guys would collect taxes, and you'd think that would probably bring in more gold eventually than fifteen hundred each. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. eventually. We turn this right. into Especially a... considering we don't have to pay to rebuild the fort. We don't have to pay for the land. Yeah. Like we're getting all of that for free, and, and the could, work's going to get done, and we don't have to pay for it. If you're concerned about the getting paid thing, you could—that's something you could argue for. That's a—that's a bargaining point. Like you say, well, we we want to take the land, but we could also get paid. You know, well, Clobar's already one. accidentally fucked himself in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get Clobar some money anyway. Yeah, we'll also, just divvy it back out afterwards. Because. Sega has also tucked this in the back of his brain. Um, <laughs> also help our door riddle, potentially. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I and then going off of that, sorry, Flint, but I I, I do agree with liking Calvio to be the Duke, just because it is Gorlin and like. The, his people type of thing. <laughs> and, and like, there may be opportunities for more land to be gained in the future as well, if that's something that you guys are interested in. Like, if if you gain enough resources, like, you could go build another fort somewhere else and and get that area. And, uh, you can trade off who has what. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, you know, we wouldn't construct things for us to use there. It's not like it's just gonna be the fort and that's it. I mean mm -hmm. we would make it usable. Yeah. And I yeah, I do and then having more places in the future spread out around the area so that way like as we explore sure. we have places to stay. That would be cool too. Yeah, that would be really bomb. Mm -hmm. And if somebody learns teleport, we can make permanent teleport circles. <gasps> In the we fort, could. yeah, in and fort. really fuck Aaron up. <laughs> we just oh, something bad happening at the thing. fort. Better teleport. Everything in prepared at all times, everywhere go. That's too. <laughs> and we can we can build the Horadine's Hamlet Bank of Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much it costs to to make a permanent? Uh, Teleportation. It was, it was it's very just expensive. A, it was more eighteen thousand two hundred gold. You have to cast it every day for a year, and it's fifty gold to cast. It, it was. It was more of just a, a saying. I, I wasn't like being serious. <laughs> I mean, we would be making money though. Also true. <laughs> It'll just be part of the taxes as the security for us to have the availability to come back to you in a split moment to yeah. protect the town. Yeah could use so, it as a place are, of research. Are we as a group? Yeah, it could act as sorry, like a research. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. What? What? I, I was just I saying realistically we, we could research fine. things there. You know? Um, mm -hmm. So like if any of you guys ever like have an interest in something, you know, we could, we could look into that because we could, you know, eventually start hiring people um, and have like our, our own network of scholars or whatever the fuck we want and um you know if we decide we want to try and research some kind of magic something we could research some kind of magic something you know um not like artificer magic something but like knowledge magic something you know um stuff like that wizards uh, it would it would be more useful for us than just a place to stay and a money source like, it would be rather beneficial, depending on how we spun it, so to speak. And I mean, Fort Zeris, that was already a wizard's tower, essentially, just not a tower. Know, tower. It was underground. So it would just literally be 
repurposed for the exact same thing it was used for, just hopefully not whatever bad shit he was doing in there. Yeah. I so like we we can leave the discussion where it is right now so you guys don't have to make a, few, a huge decision on that, um, and then you guys can continue to like text and talk about it, how you guys want to handle it moving forward. Um, and so, is there anything else that you guys would like to do here before making your way? Because this, this conversation would take probably uh, a little bit into the evening. Uh... I mean, I think Marsica's good. I don't think there's anything she really needs. Courtney, what did you want to say? Yeah, I was going to say, Siga has some information that he's kind of been holding on to for a long time. Uh -oh. um, since essentially the last time we were all in the city. So, Siga at least wants to, like, tell you guys what he knows. So, before he met you guys, um, he had a run-in with um, he was disguised as a cat, <laughs> um, with his traveling companion, and there was, uh, some people, or he found, like, a group of, uh, Robin hood S <laughs> kind of villain, um, that they were... It, they were trying to recruit the person that I was traveling with at the time, and they had masks. Um, I'm pretty sure he learned the name, which is the name that Aaron said that I'm totally blanking on right the now. The Sly Few. Yes, the Sly Few. So that perked uh, Siga's attention. Um, and as Tiny Cat... Uh, form Sega got some really like bad vibes from the people that were recruiting, um, so he was trying to tell his friend to not do it. Um, and as his adventuring as Tiny Cat uh, over to um, the reliquary, Sega peeked in, and this is when he saw his first ever wyvern. There is one in there, and he's been wanting to go back ever since. Um, and then seeing the hobgoblins have them was, like, a whole moment in and of itself of, like, oh my gosh, you're just like what I saw back in the city. And because I had this feeling of, you know, they, they're they similar to me, but they're not me. Um, and so... Zika would just want to explain all of that to you guys. Say, hey, this is what's uh, been going on. <laughs> Flint knows uh, what Kuth's reliquary is, by the way. He's probably visited it a few times. What is it? It is effectively a zoo of sorts in Andorra, where um, Kuth, a very large uh, gargantuan of a man takes in um, injured exotic creatures. Then I share this knowledge. Yeah. Sega would say that explains a lot. <laughs> I think Sega in that moment would feel a little dumb, but he wouldn't let it show <laughs> too much. Um, but out loud he would say, hmm, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Thanks, Flint, for clearing that up for me. It's really quite an uh, amazing place. You should visit it when you have time. Zika would love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So are you but guys going... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say he's definitely concerned about the, the Sly Few, though. That's definitely bookmarked in his brain. So... But, okay. Um, are you guys making your way back over to, uh, Zerf's tower? Yes. Yeah. Cool, cool. Before we leave, I, I let, uh, my mom know that we will be staying there while we are in the city and we will return later on in the evening. 
And she's like, "All right, well, I'll I'll get the um the upstairs bedrooms ready to go." <laughs> um, and so she hurries upstairs and starts making things, kind of grumbling to herself at the short notice. Um, and but not turning it down because you know hospitality. And so you guys make your way back to the outer ring and getting to Zerf's tower, the familiar whoops um four-eyed creature he says back again so soon and then he just disappears and said and like you hear like as he says i'm not even gonna let him call me gilbert and he disappears and um the door swings open and then um standing before you as uh, Zerf has come down in a hurry uh, with a book in her hand, her hair frazzled, and seeing you all, and she says, I have some not-so-great news. And then... Story of her life. You, has Flint ever seen her like this? Um, no. No. No, he has not. Clobar has also never seen her like this. Hmm. Um, and she then, uh, you also hear a familiar kind of sound and a kind of like a thud on the top floor. And she kind of looks up. She says, that must be Zindlin. And then we'll go ahead and end right there. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So, nice job tonight, guys. Go ahead and move this over here. <laughs> Has Diga ever seen Gilbert before? No, I'll Only go ahead and send when a picture. We've been in here, and so I was just like, I don't know. I'm picking up what's being described, but I'm very confused. <laughs> I've been described what Gilbert okay. is, but I I don't fucking remember. <laughs> He's uh, just decided to call it Gilbert. Yep. <laughs> I thought it was like a small beholder of sorts. Do we know his actual ba name? Basically. No, you don't know his actual name. 